There it is. We are live. Live. Think everything's running. I got audio. I got picture. Chat's up. Everything's up. Good evening, everyone. Big Al's over in the peanut gallery. What up? Ready to suspend any of you guys if you fuck around in the comments. So fuck around and find out. What, what is it? Fuck, fuck around, find out. I saw a... Uh, FIFO. FIFO. No, that's FIFO's first in, first out. <laughs> well, that would fit. That would fit, though. Anyway, we are live. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Episode three. You guys should be proud of your boy. This is three weeks in a row. I've showed up for something that I said I was going to do, which is a fucking oddity for me. Let's be real. <laughs> but we are here. We have a very special guest tonight. We have a very good cigar tonight. So I am pumped to get it rolling. Speaking of, let me get my guest over here in some spot. Let's, oh, wrong camera. I'm right there he is. I'm Brian right here. Justin, my brother yeah. from another mother. <laughs> this is this should you never be get a, my name right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's De Destin. Destin. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's funny. No one, I say no one ever forgets that. I say funny. Destin like Florida. Brian Destin. Destin, Destin right. <laughs> when everybody calls me Sears, and last week I had Carl on, I fucked I his call last name up. I Sears all the time. Dude, I'm bad. No, I'm it's great. Listen, come on, man. But thank you for you coming on, uh, Brian, obviously. Of you guys, course. if you guys don't know Brian, I mean, come on. I mean, I've talked about him on the channel 5,000 times. We do a podcast together, which, by the way, if you haven't tuned into that, we we drop it about the fifteenth of every month ish. Fifteenth of um, the month. Yeah. Um, local social pub. Local and, social um, pub. We just we hang almost out said it in have, unison. Yeah, dude. It, we just hang out for like an hour and a half, two hours, and shoot the shit. It's, yeah. it's a fun podcast. Yeah. So we do that. Yeah. Me and him have worked together for years. He's been on the channel multiple times. I've been on his channel multiple times. I mean, you guys should yeah. know Brian, and uh, I probably should say he's the owner, operator, founder of Pravada Cigar Club, if you didn't already know that. <laughs> Our favorite cigar a lot club. Of fun. Beer. Dude, it's it's been you. my favorite for a long time. It, it's uh thank you so much. And and I I don't want to seem like I'm just completely sucking your ass uh because everybody knows no. me and you are friends. So it doesn't you know it's yeah it's a biased thing but at not, this point because we're friends. You're a genuine guy. You wouldn't say something you didn't you know firmly believe no. in. If if you had a shitty club and you're an asshole, we would have never become friends in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> can I tell you? Can I? Can, can I? Exactly. Can I tell you what, <laughs> what 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 went through my head when you said that? What's that? Because like, normally when someone says it's my favorite cigar or they pay Pravada a, a, a you know a compliment in any way, I'm like, I'm like, wow, I'm so grateful, and I am so grateful. I, I you know that. So that's the first thing that goes through my head, and then it's like, what what just popped into my head was, and it's been popping into my head a lot lately is I tend to like, we've been very su wildly successful in five years in this industry, right? Uh -huh. and, and I tend to be like, in the back of my mind, as, as humble as I am, I'm like, man, I'm doing it, right? It's me, you know, and, and yeah. <laughs> Pop exactly. your collar and shit. <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> exactly talking to yourself while you're driving. Yeah. Come on, you got the, you know. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but sometimes I get a little bummed because I'm like, ah, eh, I'm not that great. Most of the other competition, they don't put the effort in. And we and, and so I, I know that might throw some people off, maybe. Uh, and I don't want it to be cocky, but it's like lately, I'm like, well, maybe it's not just me. Maybe it's not me. It's, you know, I, there's no one else putting this much effort into cigars. And and that's fine. But well, like and, once and you bringing get young people this, into the industry, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of a lot of the cigar industry was and you know, nothing wrong with older guys. I mean, I'm getting no. to be one of those older guys. But you know, there was a lot of old blood and it needed the revitalization of bringing in some of the the new guys, uh, bringing some of yeah. the young, the more hip, the more kind of and those people with wanted it. more. They wanted more than just a cigar in their hand. They 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 were literally looking at those cigars and going, "Why? Why why do I have this in my hand? Why am I smoking this? Why?" Why, um, you know, why, what, what is it about this cigar? And so I think we gave, um, we gave them some, uh, uh, we put in the extra work that gave them the content to hold on to, to go, oh, this is who made this. This is why they made it. This is what it's made of. This is what mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be tasting, which I absolutely do not taste. And you know, <laughs> that kind mm -hmm. of shit. So look, I, look, I didn't mean to get serious there. Look, Nimrax is Brian and Jeremy, two of my favorite people. Nice. What's up, Jared man? says, Brian Jared. is the man. One of the most coolest wow. and most giving people I've ever had the pleasures of meeting. We wow. are Pravada. See? Jared, you got all kinds of fans so in much. here, man. See? 
Yeah, you know, no, we, we get so much love. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. My buddy Isaac's in here. What up, Isaac? Uh, he's looking all diesel over there. He is, dude. That boy's Jack, son. He's he's swole. He might be yeah, on some of that yeah, gear, yeah. to be honest. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Liver I, I'm sure you got a little probably. liver king going on here. But but you got to look at it like this: if somebody accuses you of being on steroids, you got to take that as a, yeah, as a compliment yeah. that you're yeah. swole enough for somebody to have that thought. You know what I'm saying? I would love to do juice all the time. <laughs> I'm just I'm too scared. <laughs> I'm too I'm too afraid. <laughs> Who else we got in here? Let's see. Rune King, my man Rune King's in here. He's always in here. Nice. Uh, my man David Stewart. If he brings up Truly, I'm going to ban him. Um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love David Stewart. He's always fucking with me about Truly. I always say, he gives me a hard time. I have to give him a hard time back. Love that guy, though. He's always in here. But anyway, so we got Brian in here. Brian, now you know the, the deal, right? Have, I, you, I don't know if you probably haven't seen the, the, um, the, uh, the live stream yet, but basically. I have not. Basically, it's all good. I understand you're a busy guy. It's hard to watch a two hours of programming. You know what I mean? It's it's like watching a fucking click, full length feature. I film. click in. I click in sometimes, and I just catch pieces. You know? No, I get it. I get it. So basically, it's 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 kind of like a live leaf and you remember the, the episodes of leaf and barrel i used to of do course. it's kind of like Legendary. that but with a lot of shit talking in between, right? So okay. we get a cigar every every uh, week. We go over it. We talk about the notes. We hit the thirds. You know, we do an intro. We hit the thirds. A lot of bullshit talking in between the thirds while we're getting in between, and then we do some closing thoughts and stuff. So we, we try to make the cigar the center center focus, but there's a whole lot of other shit going on <laughs> between. Uh oh, right. we got a super chat. Let me I always make sure I hit all my super chat people. Austin Green, thank you for the super chat, my brother. Having wow. a smoke on the back porch invited my dad for this stream. Cheers, y'all. Ah, you and your dad, man. I wish I could still nice. hang out with my dad on the back porch. Yeah, enjoy that while you can, my brother, because. You know, one day that shit won't be there. So cheers to you and your yeah. dad. Hope you guys have a good evening. Let's see. All right. So the cigar, I'm going to try to get into the cigar pretty quick and then we can talk a lot more shit because yeah, I found I'm that curious. If, you, you, this is, this is the AJ Fernandez month. It looks like, right? Something this like is that. the AJ Fernandez month. We've done okay. the uh, Dorado. We've done the Escuro and okay. this is the San Latino, Connecticut. And then we're going to close off the months with the Ramon Aonis. Oh, Wow, that's a good now, one. Now, wh wh how were the two? How were the the first two? The Dorado and dude, I've never Wilson. had the Dorado, and uh -huh. that's probably my new favorite AJ cigar. Yeah, yeah. I, no, no, it's the best. It's his best production cigar. There's no dude, doubt. he told me that slaps, bro. It was yeah. so good. It was. You know what it made me say, Brian? Do you know what it made me say? <laughs> it, it, it did it made me i mean it was so fun that was for the longest time my my favorite was the scuro because you know I, I tend to like darker wrapper cigars um yeah. but the, that one took over my probably my probably my number one so that cigar was fantastic it was really really good um he, this will so probably talented. be my least favorite of the month and that's not to say that this isn't a awesome cigar right but of, the four, <laughs> but of the four, yeah, that sounded just like it, didn't it? <laughs> She's like, was that him just doing that? I can't um, stop once I, I can't stop. I'm telling you. But, but of the four, I'm just not a huge Connecticut guy, right? So that's completely my biases of my flavors that I enjoy. Man, but you speak for, and this is what I love about you so much is that you, and, and, and when I met you, I, I, I didn't, you knew more than I did that you were going to have a big impact on the club. And you also knew that we would have some impact on you. And I always felt like we didn't have enough to offer, but then I watched and I have to take some credit for, it. I watched just both of our numbers explode. And so <laughs> I have to say there was a fair trade of, yeah, no, you me know, and Allison people. have talked about that before that we kind of grew together, like both of the club and my channel, both kind of, it kind of grew at the same time. It was, it was a cool experience amazing very few people get to do stuff like that and it creates a bond that um really speaks speaks for itself and and, and builds relationships it's like it's like success there's levels to that shit and once you start hitting some of those levels and when you get to there's, do that together yep you know it's, it's that, cool that's, man. it's yeah. it's been cool it's been real so cool you you're a taste maker you're you're you 
aren't just a taste maker, but you know, you're like the every man in a sense. No, you know, like, right. I, if you like it, most likely most people are going to love it. Okay. I, for the most and part, so, try to represent my audience the best that I can. Now that's not to say everybody's palates are different, of right? Course, so of there's going to be people that love whiskeys that I don't particularly love. There's going to be people that right. love cigars that I don't particularly love, but right. I think I represent the fairly like common guy. I'm telling you, as someone who goes around making it his business, his literal business, to listen to feedback on cigars and figure out what to do next, uh -huh. um, I can listen to your advice 99% of the time uh, smoking a cigar. And what you just said is 99% true for most of our generation, this craft cigar movement's idea of cigars. What was once hailed king of all rappers is now sort of – it's not dead. And that's the thing, you know, it, it, that's the interesting part of the Connecticut shade is it's probably still the most used rapper, but our sort of uh, crew or our, you know, this craft cigar movement, they don't love Connecticut shades. I'm one of the I, few I, people that absolutely love Connecticut shades. I, I, I like them. And that's mm -hmm. why I said, I mean, I wouldn't have put the cigar in the month if sure. I didn't think it was a banging cigar, right? Sure. Like, right. I think it will go over it because I bring out the cigar bobble once we start smoking. I think yeah. I rated it in the high 80s, I think. So, I mean, it's still got a very good score. It's a very good cigar, but just it's not my preferred flavor profile. So it's automatically going to just take a knock right off the right off the rip, right? So, um, but there are a lot of people that really like them. So let me let me hit the the B roll real quick, and let's go over the the makeup of the cigar, and then we'll get it. Wow, it, I can't we'll wait get, to see this. Let me oh, see. We got, we got B roll and everything, dude. Whoa. We're fucking professional around here, bitch. Wow. Here we got it all. <laughs> real, it's real. I've never seen that on a live. That's that's oh. really cool. There we go, oh, right there. Look at, that. Look, look no at this. One, it's beautiful. No one does B roll like it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Holy so shit. this is the San Latano Connecticut. Okay, it's a five by fifty two Robusto Ecuador Connecticut 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 wrapper Honduras binder. I like Connecticut <laughs> Nicaraguan and Dominican Republic filler. Usually you can find this for around eight bucks. Sometimes a little under eight. Sometimes a little over eight. But in general, about eight bucks. It's, um, if I'm not mistaken, and Brian, you can go into this a little wow. bit more, but if I'm not mistaken, th something I read about this is this is AJ Fernandez's grandfather's recipe uh -huh. for Cubans that he then <laughs> turned into a cigar. I, I, I saw that on a, a video or an article or something somewhere sometime. Is that accurate? I, I have no idea, but I will ask that now because I'm going to be speaking to him shortly. So yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. So it's a yeah. beautiful cigar. It, um, I'm a big fan of it, man. I'm a big fan. It, um, I mean, look at that. It's a beautiful cigar. It's, a, there's nothing like the golden Connecticut shade. It, it's just a beautiful cigar, man. It really is. Um, let me get back over here. That's actually, you probably see it a little better. Look, look at, at that. that foiling. You see that foiling underneath with it's, it's got, a a, a a texture. Yeah, dude. It looks like it's hammered like that. Isn't that cool? Yep. It, and, and I, <laughs> just from like, you know, me and you have been making a cigar and doing some things like that's not something that like when you order a cigar band automatically comes, they come very plain and you have to like tell them every little detail you want. So the fact that he puts all that detail in it, I yeah. mean, that is a, uh, it's a good looking cigar, bro. It's a good looking cigar. Oh, yeah. I'm handsome. a fan. We call that a handsome, handsome cigar. It's a handsome cigar. Oh, I got to get out the old cigar Bible. Hold on. I have got to get right out the old, the old cigar Bible. I enjoy using this. Do you journal your cigars or do you smoke so damn never. many that you just don't? Never. <laughs> he's, he's like, I never I do. Well, you I smoke so do. many cigars, dude, that it, you, you would probably run out of ink. <laughs> yeah. Um, that and I just – I don't know. I, 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 it's a real chore for me to do the, the, the notes that I do right. for the club. Right. It, it's it, it. The older I get, the more of a chore it becomes. It's like, damn, I got it. Because it's, it's like intensive. So – for me, just to ju – like that's the work part of it, right? And so for me, when I'm not working, I'm just smoking to enjoy. That's not what I'm thinking about doing. But I highly recommend if you're someone uh, at any level of smoking to journal your cigars. One thing that I will be pushing – so I, I go through themes. I don't know how you are with your stuff, but I go through themes mentally, right? Mm -hmm. And right now I said something the other day and I'm like, that's it. Collecting cigars are like collecting moments in time. 
right? A cigar, the thing Brian's that's going really deep. Cool, He's going yeah. deep. Yeah, but it's cool because I, I sit around and I think about like, why the fuck are we so into this thing? It's almost weird. Their mm -hmm. leaves rolled up, you know, all that. I think about all this shit. And well, dude, like, who the fuck is the first guy that thought about, let's take a leaf and ferment it and put it in a, was it called a palum? A pal it, what wasn't the, ferment, uh, it, it wasn't fermented. They didn't have pilones. This pilones, is all new. That's what it is. Yeah. This is all I mean, very new. Who's the first guy in, that in figured fact, that shit out though? You know what I'm saying? So, so Hanky Kellner, when we had dinner together in DR a couple months ago, he told me that it, it happened, uh, an African slave in Virginia. They believe that's the story is that this African slave did something and it was a mistake and this 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 tobacco got cooked all night and that invented the curing process. Ah. Uh, I just okay. I had to bring this up cuz I thought it was funny not to interrupt your story but uh, I thought this was a funny ass comment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that B-roll had me like <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I love that's, that. That's great. F Todd, what up? That, that is great. Do. F Todd, appreciate you, my brother. Um, yeah, I'm, Allison's like, y'all need to light this fucking cigar. She's right. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to get get it sparked up. Trying to keep y'all on track. Thank yeah, you. You're the producer. Brian turns into a pumpkin at like 11 o'clock, 10, yeah. 10 30. <laughs> That's true. Brian keeps us on task on the podcast, though, man. It gets to be about an hour and a half. He's like, all right, Jeremy, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, so much stuff going on lately. It's crazy. It's not even well, funny. That's why I'm not worried about this podcast running over or this live stream running over because Brian will be right in the middle of something be like, okay, Jeremy Knight, see you guys later. Love you. Bye. And then I'll just be here by myself and there'll be an empty fucking shot of Brian's cigar room. <laughs> well, the good news is this is just a Robusto. It's in this, this cigar normally when I smoke it, it only takes about an hour to smoke it. It's not a big old long like Toro monster hour and a half cigar. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty pretty short smoker. Um, but yeah, I ask AJ about that because I, I heard that. You know who I think it was? I think it was on cigar cigars daily. I think it was on his, one of his videos when he talked about this years ago. He's um, a nice guy. That he's guy. a really nice guy. I really, I need to have him he on is. the live. Uh, he one, is. He was very night. kind to me, and and I tried to return the favor, and he never returned the call. And I don't. I'm not going to read into that. I know he's got a business partner, and you know they make decisions together. I'm sure, but I, I really wanted to promote his brand and stuff because he did an unboxing on on us, and he didn't have to do that. And so I think he's a really nice guy. I'm seeing that there's a guy, one of his ex employees on Instagram, that is saying that he's going to come out and tell stories about this guy that uh, how toxic the work environment there is and all oh, this stop stuff. it he's probably one of these fucking super soft <laughs> blue uh, hair having fucking gets offended by everything you know one of those fucking people it's a toxic work environment i'm but my ass hurts nah. you know what you know what i say to this is is this this is something that i've been practicing you know what a, a toxic work about this just tells you real quick i don't interrupt my <laughs> story but this is what <laughs> cracks me up about people from my era compared to people in this era oh right? i just had when this I, conversation when i was 16 17 i was working on a framing crew okay f framers by the way they don't fuck around framers do not play our got our foreman the guy that ran the 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 crew would run around and if you weren't doing anything he'd be like hey do something suck somebody's dick what are you fucking doing that's how he talked to us, okay? <laughs> and these guys when are whining like, oh, it's a toxic work environment. This guy was telling me to suck people's dicks. I mean, come on. Bro. Bro. People these days are soft, bro. The things, the things at 16 years old, the, the things that that happened to me at jobs are unspeakable. Uh, both in both ways, good and bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, I, I, you know, so that's the terror that, that we came from. I remember some guy I told, I think I told you this story at a, at a Christmas party. My father was the, the owner of the place and the, the, a, he's a gay guy. He's a great guy. He's married to another guy that worked at the front desk. They were funny as hell. And he was drunk and he walked into the bathroom behind me and it was like, please let me suck your dick. <laughs> 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 he said just pretend it's a girl just pretend it's a girl close your eyes i was like ah 
I don't know what to do. I, and I, I felt, I felt so weird afterwards. You're still, I'm, st I was a mature 16 year old, but still, you're 16 year. I was like, did I do something to make him want? And my dad's like, he's fucking likes guys. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like. So did you let him suck you up? <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's over. It's over. There's no need to relive that moment. Do you think that he was, maybe he wasn't proud of that either. I mean, yo, it, it, it could have bothered me, but I, I didn't let it. Like the, the, the thing now is to revel in it, man. You can't, I, bro, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a mission. And listen, this is the thing. Like when it comes to the community, I'll, I do everything I can for my community, but there comes a point where if someone's toxic, uh, it is goodbye, oh, no, my for sure. And there's no, sure. there's no looking back. I have, I'm on a, I'm trying to make history. I am on a trajectory to do things that no one's ever done before. And my people are coming with me. So if you're taking away from that, if you're pulling me back, even slightly, I gotta, whoop, we gotta cut that thread no. and keep, keep it moving. There so, for sure you know, are toxic people 100%, but I do so, think. So if you get cut off though, and you start talking shit, you just look like, eventually people go, you just guys just whining about this stuff. It's well, that's the thing, right? Is there's a balance between somebody who's just toxic and negative and just brings you down because they're always just an asshole. And then a lot of these newer generations of people that just, they're too goddamn sensitive about everything. And let me take just a quick second. My brother, Carl, he was, he was our guest last <laughs> week. He, uh, he threw it in. He's on the live. Hey. How are you from New England? That hey, what's up, man? Point. Hey, where in oh, New England is he? He he loves hats. Actually, you can't see his whole thing. I think he's got a hat very similar. To that yeah, he, I can see he's got a brim on. That's cool. Where is he mm -hmm. in New England? Fuck, where is he at in New England? Carl, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to respond, bro. I, I just fell me. in love with I fell in love with New England, man. We went up to uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Portland, Maine, and I was just like, all right, I can live here. This is one of the coolest damn places. It was like a movie set, both towns. It was unreal, man. It was so cool. The food was great. People were nice. I felt safe as hell. <laughs> I never feel <laughs> safe. <laughs> I was I safe like as I was a motherfucker die. up there. You could have done anything <laughs> up in up in Maine, and and fucking you'd have been just fine. I, it was really just an incredible eye opening trip, and I kicked myself in the ass because I lived up, you know, PA in New York my whole life, and. All I knew about New England was Boston. I'm like, I'm not going to Boston. What do I go to Boston for? You know, <laughs> these towns weren't great back then, by the way. No, Philly, Philly was not fun in the 90s. It was just dangerous. Now it's becoming dangerous again, but it's a cool culinary town now. I don't think Boston was like a place that pe people really wanted to go visit back then. You went there for business or something, right? But mm -hmm. now these, these towns and COVID made it even more so that people moved back to their home cities. And they're making them cool again. They're bringing the shit they learned in New York or L.A. or Miami, and they're bringing it to you know Minneapolis. And they're and and it's and it's oh, maybe that's a bad example, but uh -oh, even hold like on. if if uh, I interrupt you occasionally, uh, sorry, Brian, but I, I like to make sure that I hit the super chats because those people are you know they're throwing in a little of their hard earned cash. I want to make sure we uh, give them a little shout out there. Piper on the Bay, appreciate you, my brother. He's I gotta been put here. one of those on my channel. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 uh he's been on here every week since we started doing these. So I appreciate you, my brother. Yo, That's smoking cool, one of man. Brian's tester cigars from AJ. It's a Maduro nice. sixty one X sixty six. Whoa, what's up with what's up with that one, Brian? What's up with that one, bro? I think he means six by sixty. Oh, six sixty. Oh, six sixty by okay. So sixty or ring sixty. Six by sixty. I think that's what he meant. Six by sixty. Yeah. So can we talk about how much oh, six bolder? Oh, six and a half by sixty-six. So sixty-six okay. ring gauge. Six and a half I, by sixty-six. Do you have that one that's sense. a sixty-six ring gauge? I don't. That I is. Mean, a, I've had. I've had some, but no. That I is a monster of a cigar, dude. Your jaw gets tired smoking that one. Jeez, the sixty-six is a big boy. Back to all this. right. Let's hit some of these notes in his first third though, before we get too deep into it. Um. Like I said, this is, uh, what is this? Ecuador, Connecticut wrapper, Honduras, binder, Nicaraguan, and Dominican filler. Um, I'm getting what you would expect out of a Connecticut, honestly, at the first part of it. Uh, in my notes, I have woody cedar. It's got a very nice nuttiness, creamy, slightly sweet, and I get kind of a honey nut Cheerios thing every now and Ooh. then. It's almost like this sweet... How about how about leather too? Are you getting any leather on the retro hair? I, mm. To me, I get a little leather. Yeah. Well, everything yeah. you mentioned is there. 
It's but, it's hard to tell if that's leather. It's definitely like an earthy, musty kind of. I would sure. definitely. And the retro hell, you get a lot more. I uh, originally, when I put my notes down, I had noticed that in the first third there was almost no pepper, which for AJ is bizarre because he is a very peppery kind of cigar guy. On the yeah. retro, you get a little bit of the pepper though. I think. Oh, so listen, you just smoked a cigar. I did not, and this cigar is spicy for a Connecticut shade wrapper. If it's it your is first spicy cigar, yeah. If you if you take, but it's not you the black pepper flavor hours. though, right? It's like a spiciness, but not the black pepper flavor you get in a lot of AJ cigars. It's just like a almost like a red paper, a red pepper spicy. There's not a lot of flavor to it. It's just a spiciness. And then there's like this cream, vanilla, oak. I don't know what the hell's going on in there. The cedar's on the retro. There's something else going on, uh, 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 like uh, the base of it. Um, first of all, put your cigar up. We both smoke a little fast. And look at that razor sharp burn line. Are you oh, kidding me? I gotta find me? the fucking, there it is. First of all, construction. That's number one. You want to know why this guy's so good? It starts with the construction. That's AJ, uh, man. That's why another he's making the about, one we're doing. Another thing about him is his cigars are different things. The same cigar is different things to different people in different parts of their cigar journey. If you're a novice and you don't know how to retro, this is just a smooth smoke with a lot of stimulation on the mouth. Yep. If you know how to retro, this becomes <laughs> oh, something totally oh, different. Hold on. I got, I got one wow. for you there. Exceptional mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> This You're doing great production value. Wizard mouth feel. <laughs> that sounds so filthy. What it's is like, that from? Is that the that cartoon is from, with the robots? Uh, it, was Bob's, it was from Bob's Burgers. It was that cartoon. Mm. Ah, fuck. What was the name of that show? I can't remember now. But uh, a lot of people. About the one with the aliens and robots. Was that the one? Uh, I think that was it's the one. Got, the guy's got like a lobster thing going on. The main uh -oh. character. The mask. King, I will see everybody Shaggy later. Rogers. You're the best. Up, oh, the mask king, nice. Shaggy Rogers. I guess he's got to dip out, brother. I appreciate you stopping by. Have a good evening. Nice. We'll be on here for another hour or so. So if you get a chance, stop back in. Um, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Where's that? Oh, it's Room King, my man. Just picked up fifty nice. LCA cigars. Big thanks, Brian. My humidor is stocked. Is T? Are you? I know this guy. Is he over in um, in Norway? I don't know. I mean, by the name, you would think maybe, but he could just really I know, like I think, Thor. I think I know this dude, man. No, I think I know this dude. I think he was in the club for a long time. He's in time, here just he about was, every week. He, he's he's my he's my brother. He's overseas. Mother. Well, either way, thank you so much for supporting. Uh, you know the artists and craftsmen that we're supporting, and for supporting Pravada for bringing you guys this stuff. We have so much fun stuff in store. It's nuts. Like, it's fucking nuts. And then we have some game changer. Jeremy, when I tell you some of this stuff, I, you know what I'm a little upset about, man? I got that. Oh, that's the good stuff right there. Well, you know, I was sitting here thinking because we always, you know, it's leaf and barrel, right? So we always have a little bit of whiskey with the cigars and we talk about that. I was thinking, you know, these Connecticut's are light, right? Uh, now, as far as for Connecticut's, AJ rolls one of the more stout. Connecticut's like you were talking, but it's still a Connecticut. And I'm like, a lot of the whiskeys that I would normally pair, I just don't feel like it would go well. But this yeah. is a little bit more yeah. delicate of a uh, of a whiskey. Let me get it. Bro, this focus. production level is insanity. You are crushing stuff. Thanks, right now. buddy. Look, look, look at this bottle, though, dude. Look, look how dusty. <laughs> I love that. Bro, uh, that that bottle right there, uh, cigar nut, Chris. He he sent me that bottle as a wonderful gift. Thank you, Chris. And um, I tell you, it is delicious. It's probably it's delicious, one of the better whiskeys. It's, it's man. delicate. It's lightly smoky. Love it. You never had Japanese whiskey, have you? No. Do, do you have a Glen Cairn up here? No. Well, you got to go get a Glen. Don't I don't have another one up here. No. Okay. I did, I thought you were gonna bring up your cocktail like you normally do. Oh, she was watching that fucking smut trash shit that she watches. What's that? Love is blind. Some it's like <laughs> that, it's like the Bachelor, the Bachelorette, like the I've most useless. It. I I think it's a little more creative than some of those shows, but uh, yeah, it's bizarre. And then you feel, man, and then and like the dude, 
Well, like, oh. like the dude will be so in love with the girl and then they meet and you can clearly see she's not <laughs> into it. And then like, <laughs> but, but like she goes along with it anyway, cause it's TV and she wants to stay on the show and she feels bad and blah, blah. And then like, it just ends in major heartbreak later. Yep. Yep. Dude, it's this, good, it's good entertainment. I haven't had this. <laughs> it is. It is. I haven't had this in a while and I've forgotten how fucking delicious this is actually. By the way, look at that ash holding on, bro. Look at that guy hanging in there so far. Straight as an arrow, hanging in there, looking good. Amazing. Truly amazing. This Let's is see how golden. this goes with this Habiki Harmony. Golden, honey, cedar, white pepper, cream. I like your honey nut Cheerios thing. That's that's, that's nutty. This is this is a beautiful Connecticut. If someone charged twenty dollars for this and then you tried it, you'd be like, "Wow, this is a great Connecticut." <laughs> Fucking crazy, right? Wow, that whiskey is perfect with a cigar because mm -hmm. that whiskey isn't. It's not a crazy strong proof. Yeah, forty three, so eighty six proof. So it's not crazy strong proof. It's lightly sweet, honey, kind of delicate with just a hint of nice. smokiness. It's a uh, it, I, I, you know, I never thought about it until tonight. I don't know why, but I feel like a lot of Japanese whiskeys would probably pair great with Connecticut cigars. Thousand percent. We had some guys in the club that uh, are have a crew in Japan that like age. They like find source barrels. They also source cigars to archive. And we were able to hook up with them for a couple of their releases when they need like someone to help buy. Uh, uh, they don't, they have too many. <laughs> Edward nice. says, both of my dudes, member of Provada Cigar Club. Or, uh, Club. Oh, that's great. <laughs> member of Provada Cigar Club and bought Jeremy's glass tray, Zippo, cigar, and cigar Bible. Extremely happy so with cool. all of them. My brother. Thank you, my man. Thank Glad you, Edward. With everything. Appreciate oh, you. We got super chats. Super chat from Dylan Queen. Thank you, my friend. Mm -hmm. You rock, dude. Your videos make me appreciate cigars and whiskey more. Having Wild Turkey 101 right now up here in Manitoba. Ready for the weekend. My, wow. my brother's from Canada. My The upper hey, part you, of North America. You know we're, we're available in Canada now, Jeremy? Oh, yeah. I saw you announce that. So, Dylan, and it looks like the... You oh, joined the club. For, it's like they used to pay like... 30 bucks to us and then like another $75 in tariffs. It's $45 for the whole thing now. And it's no, no one holds your stuff. It's delivered to you from Canada. It's amazing. I love my people up in Canada and he's drinking wild turkey. And if you've great. been watching my recent videos, uh, Dylan, you'll know that that shit ranks very highly in the Cyrus household. We love that stuff. Uh, next one, Super Chat, Jared Parsons, another one of my friends nice. I think, if not mistaken, has been here several times. Super Chat, appreciate you. Just wanted to send a special thanks to you, Jeremy. Your videos on Pravada from three years uh -huh. ago is what finally made me sign up in February 20. Can't imagine being part of a better journey slash community. Jared, that's was, awesome, brother. I'm glad to hear that, man. Yeah, he he's one of the... Um, um, can't see the picture but jared that's 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 he he was just here he was just at my house oh was he uh yeah monday yeah monday we did the winners of subterraneo he was one of the three people that was able oh to that's awesome set. What's yeah. The, yeah he was he's amazing he's such a nice young man like what cigar yeah. is that he's smoking that's one of the ones that has the gold foil the the, leaf, the gold leaf on the cigar what that's, brand is that that um, does that that's I, um, I had one in my humidor until cavalier, about a month ago cavalier don't they put that gold leaf on all their cigars? Yeah. Yeah. Subterraneo. Those yeah, were great, so this, by the way. These were amazing. So he was able to. So we had this amazing day, like of all like whiskeys and champagnes and, 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 and culinary experiences. We took over a restaurant. Uh, it was awesome. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to do a. Um, remember when you did the cigar contest? The ash, the long ash contest, long and, you, ash, get, and yeah. you gave away the fucking car. Yeah, sure I mean, you know, I give away it. like an ashtray in my videos. Brian gives away a charger. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, he's not one I to thought, one up people or anything, but he's like, oh, you're giving no. away a cigar Bible. That's cute. I'm giving away a Dodge Charger. <laughs> I, 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 it couldn't have gone to the to a better person. Um, uh, this woman smoked started smoking cigars just to win the car for her husband and she did oh that's sweet and they have it up in kentucky they take it to cigar shows and stuff like that's that. that's great it's beautiful i i 
I only said that I shouldn't have given it away because last time she was here, she she when they were leaving, she started it, and I, it's just the sound that this car makes is just so nice. I was just like, damn, you're I like missed that. You're like, goddamn. Oh, we yeah. lost a ton of money on that. That 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 did not go as planned. That was me. Well, dude, was you were giving away a stuff. car, bro. A car. I thought you it can't... would kind of balance out with the sales of cigars. Are you fucking shit me? A car? And it was a brand new one that you put modifications mm. on and put a wrap on and like all this stuff, right? It, it was like two years, two years used. But I had like oh, no was miles. It? I thought it was yet. new. Low miles, very low miles. It was it was a perfect car. I, I drove it a few times. I loved it. We wrapped it. The the wrap was amazing. It's beautiful. It's a it's a show car now. In fact, the the, the person who wrapped it called me a year later, and they were like, "Hey, we're going to a show. We want to know if we can bring your car with us." I'm like, uh, "I don't have it." Now. I mean, talking about construction, bro. Look at that. Look at that guy. Mm. So that's the beginning of it. That's Lots where of it starts. Uh oh, here we go, Brian. Uh, it is. Turk wants to know when to, the next Provodicon is. Yeah, it's going to be on uh, March uh, 8th and 9th, I believe, of 2024. Um, and it's going to be a two day event. It's also going to be uh, the first uh, craft cigar festival. Uh, most likely will be actually you know what i can't leak anything anymore jeremy because people will try to foil the plans it's crazy <laughs> you know like i can't say things but it's going to be in central florida you guys will be there it will be very inexpensive to get into i don't believe in that uh there will be plenty of unique rare cigars there will be manufacturers there we're going to truly celebrate this craft cigar movement and the next day we have the first craft cigar festival and anyone is able to attend that but Provodicon is at a vineyard in central florida and it's going to be dope we're taking over the whole place awesome look at that <laughs> look at that sexy ass jeremy has going that's a, that's right but look at that thing Pa yeah beautiful now any of the the harsh i won't say harsh but in the beginning it was a little the cedar was like a little tingy on my tip of my tongue yeah and and now it's gone completely away and it's got it's just turned into like roasted cream. almonds yeah cream cream, cream. Some, pep, some pepper in there i was about to say to touch back on because we're creeping up on the end of the first third beginning of the second third that spiciness has died down a little bit for me the spiciness has died down the cedar has gotten much. I think the sweetness of the cigar has come up, and everything's kind of hit a good mid sweetness middle went mellow. Up. Yeah, sweetness went up. The creaminess went up. Uh, I still get I that little bit of like Cheerios. The sweetness made it extra creamy all of a sudden. Like right it's, now, it's, now who who else can do this? I don't know anyone else that can do this. I tell you I one don't. that I really really enjoy, and I don't know that it can compete with the sweetness and the creaminess, but it's it's not your traditional. Connecticut and I really love it is the J London. Uh, so that comes out of it used to come out of the Henderson factory, and I tell you what, Henderson and his family, the um, Ventura family, they come from the Davidoff Tabadome, you know, kind of uh, history, and um, they make a great Connecticut cigar. That's the best. The, the I don't want to give my my oh, the the guys that are really want to compete with me work out of that factory. And I don't want to give anything away, but that's what he does well. They do the Connecticut. The other stuff, I can leave it. But the Connecticut, he does make a great Connecticut cigar. You're right. The Cross Out Podcast. Oh, he's got a podcast. Look at my man with the super chat. I appreciate you, my brother. Tattoo crew in the that's building cool. just wanted to say, what's up? Big fan of Jeremy. Would love to have a cigar with both of you guys. Who is that? Come Who's to Provodicon, man. I'm going to try to make it to Provodicon this year. And... March, March eighth and ninth. It's not this year, baby. It's next year. We we already passed yeah. March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, this guy's in the t in the tattoo crew. You know what that means, right? He's oh, got he's got a Provada tat. tattoo. Yeah, there's nice. thirteen of us now. Thirteen, Jerry. Can you believe that? Does this mean I have to get I, a Provada tattoo? Is that what that means? I would like you to, but you don't have to. I'll I get say one, that dude. to everyone, and, and I don't. I, I don't treat bro. I'm covered in them. You think, I mean, it's not going to bother me, bro. Yes, it would. It, I'd be, 
I'd be so honored to have you in the tattoo crew. You can yeah, join man, our WhatsApp we'll messenger group. We'll do it up. We'll, we'll maybe we'll do a, a live po- podcast from the uh, tattoo studio one day and we'll get tattoos. <laughs> That'd be kind of That'd fun. Be cool. That would be cool. All right. I'm going to show this real quick because I'm going to have to ash it. This thing is getting ridiculous. It's getting I'm not going to sit here and smoke upside down the whole fucking live stream. But just to show you, I mean, the construction on that thing is solid. Solid. Connecticut seemed to hold us hold a longer ash often. I will me. say a very light tap, and that baby fell right off though. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it was ready. ready I go. was about to wear that some bitch, so that's why I was wanting to get rid of it right away. I could not suggest any more Japanese Habiki Harmony is great with a cigar. It's fantastic. So I had the I had the lower end uh, Japanese whiskey the uh, from Suntory. That's uh-huh. from Centauri too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what's the one below that? The twenty-eight dollar one, the thirty dollar one, thirty-five. I don't know what it is. Square <sighs> you bottle. know, I'm not, I'm not Hibiki. as versed on Japanese Hibiki, whiskey. No, no Hibiki, this is Hibiki. No? this is Habiki oh, Harmony. That's Habiki. Yeah, this is Habiki okay. Harmony. So I think the regular Habiki comes, Habiki comes in a, a square glass. Then no. Wait, where's square Focus? Bottle? There's Focus. Everything's backwards on camera, so I get all fucked up. There we go. Let me see Suntory here. Habiki oh, Harmony. Uh, what a beautiful bottle, by the way. How many whiskey bottles do you know have like a glass top? Looks like it's a decanter it's and stuff. So beautiful. It's um, Toki. He Toki. said he's Eric 30. from the tattoo crew, Brian. You know Eric? Uh, of course I know Eric. Well, I um, imagine if he's got a tattoo, you probably know all those guys. But. <laughs> of course. No, we, we have a little chat group that we all keep in touch uh, on WhatsApp. Um, somebody wants to know what Allison is sipping tonight. She's going teetotal tonight, and she forgot to bring her cocktail up here, and she doesn't have a Glen Karen. I'm about to go down and make a drink, so I feel left out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's got FOMO. She's got FOMO. What are you going to make? Oh, whiskey. whiskey yeah, my, my wild turkey's up here. That's part of the reason why I didn't make it. Oh, here. Your wild turkey is up here from it's when we did floor, I think. From when we did the video. Son of a bitch. I finished off that rare breed last night. <sighs> Got to give Allison so, her. This relationship with AJ has really helped propel uh, the, the the movement with great cigars. He, that, you know, what he told me when I met him. He was like, "Hey, man, basically, like we have to talk with a translator." But he was like, uh, "You, uh, uh, no," he said. A lot of people talk shit, and he was like, "Now you have a reason for them to talk shit." And he <laughs> put the cigars. Up. He was like, "This." This is going to make all of them shut the fuck up. <laughs> Dude, we, we talked we'll talk about more. it. We talked about it on the uh, when me and you did the live stream back uh, was it a month or so ago when we dropped the uh, new cigar that, that AJ rolled. And um, I mean, I don't mean to sound like an AJ simp or anything, but like he just rolls great cigars, man. He really does. And he's also one of those guys that rolls great cigars at. And it's one of the reasons I wanted him to be one of the first ones. And every month isn't going to be a full you know, uh, maker the whole month. I might vary it up Kinda and do cool different, though. but, um, he just, he rolls a great cigar. Rarely do you find one with construction issues and he doesn't try to rape people on the price. Like he comes in usually at like eight or nine bucks for cigars that other people are charging 10, 12, 15 bucks for. So can I talk about that for a minute? I, and I hope that they don't get upset about this, but He's one of the least expensive, really good brands out there. But to get him to make your cigars, he's the he's probably the most expensive. Well, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because it's like if he's going to do something for you, then he's got to get his part. You got to get your part. Like it's a whole thing and it becomes a more expensive. The more sure. people touch a cigar, the more expensive it gets. But the, the but the m- most important part is, is he makes the best cigars like this. He does make great is- and and the the way you know that is you just talk to another cigar manufacturer because cigar manufacturers love to throw dirt on each other. You mention AJ and they go, "Nah, yeah, that's that's he's a genius." Anybody who says that's just throwing shade, bro. Just throwing mm-hmm. fucking shade. That's all there is to it. We also have I have a list of questions that I ask every guest that I'm going to try to get to before we get too far along because in the past two podcasts I've learned I forget about it. I don't start until we're like at the very end of the cigar yeah. and then we run way over. So once okay. we get but another 10 or 15 minutes, we'll crack into the questions. They're like simple questions. They're, a lot of them are yes and no and stuff. It's, it's just kind of a fun well, thing to get a beat ask, on. Ask me one now. Uh, do, you, do you mind asking me one? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to get my... Uh, There's simple stuff like this. Whiskey or beer? Uh, 
It's okay. Uh, We're not going to judge you. If you like beer better, it's fine. Look, there's no judgment on these questions. It's just to kind of get a bead on somebody. Not that. It's not that. It's just they both serve two different purposes in my life. I like for love me- beer. I do. I'll admit it. It's the it's adult soda, and I loved soda. As a kid. <laughs> so so I love beer, but nothing goes better with cigars than fucking whiskey, man. Are you kidding Dude, me? Dude, it's hard to beat it, man. Are you it's hard to me? the Brown only liquor thing that period, compete, but whiskey. The only thing it compete is coffee. Yes, that is correct. Co- coffee and cigars and whiskey and cigars, I think, are the ultimate cigar beverages. Personally, that's my personal thing. I'm sending you some of. We're taking the barrel aged out of the barrels and I'm sending you some for review. So, you know, we're aging cigars in, in whiskey barrels now. Oh dude, I got to check that out for sure. You know me, that's like two of my favorite things. Do you want me to keep asking you these questions or do you want to come back to it later? Um, yeah, I, it's, it's up to you. You could spatter them in. Okay. We'll, we'll ask one more and then we'll come back. Okay. How do you order your steak? Medium rare. My man. Okay. That's the only one that if you say above medium, I'm going to judge you. <laughs> so it loses, it loses something above. Dude, it medium. destroys it. Just, oh, and look, I, see? And, 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 this and motherfucker. Ch- I'm sorry, what? Brian. I totally cut you off. This motherfucker. Told you he was going to do it. Told you. <laughs> First question What flavor truly do you drink? <laughs> Fuck you, David, you asshole. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say something really ruthless. It's your mama's mm. box flavor. Oh, <laughs> oh, there it is. Allison's Allison's cocktail, guys. There it oh, is. Oh wow, that looks great. She wanted you to see. Oh, you put the ghetto ice in there, though, bro. We, oh. we got the big ice cubes down there. I don't think about it. That's great. She is. <laughs> She, David says, sorry, I had to throw it in there. I get it, man. I'm just fucking with you. It wouldn't be a proper podcast if you didn't throw it truly out or a proper live stream if you didn't throw it out there. Super What's chat. What's the best steak, best steak you've ever had? Super chat. Uh, turkey, auto zero. Turkey ginger few. You had a leaf by Oscar. So have you had a leaf? In, uh, yes, I have. I actually keep one in my humidor as kind of bar- as a barometer for how my humidor is doing. Because that outer leaf, yes, it does, yes, is like a right. perfect barometer for if your humidity's right. Oh, yeah. If it stays soft and supple, then it's good. If it gets dry and crackly, your cigar, your humidor is probably a little too low. And if it gets super, oh, don't give me ideas, soft, Jeremy. Don't give me ideas. That's great. I love that. Oh, dude, I keep one. I don't have one right now because I actually smoked it. But normally, yeah. I'd say ninety-five percent of the time, I have one in my cigar and I use it as a a barometer. I'll, I'll tell you how I know you're right is because. We use tobacco for B-roll sometimes, yep. and I can tell how the weather is in this studio by how dry these things are. Dude, because I use Bovida, I don't keep a hygrometer uh, in my humidor because it's, it's always dead on. I mean, it's just when you use Bovida, you don't have to fuck with it, right? It's like it's perfect. Um, but the one thing that I do kind of keep in there usually to help me just keep an eye on it is a, a leaf by Oscar. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. a thing. Um, oh, Cigar Public is in here. Nice. Danny, what's up? Today's Whiskey Wednesday article on Cigar Public has the best of both worlds, the new coffee whiskey from Kings County Distillery. I didn't know Kings County was still in business. I did not know that. I thought they went out of business for some reason. Mm-hmm. It's a cool cool bottle they make. You ever see one of their bottles with the little mm-hmm. label on it? No, it's I haven't. It's pretty cool. It's old school. Local uh, Arturo says local social merch coming soon. Glenn's shirts. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah. I'm sure we will eventually. We're kind of just getting legs under it right now. Just kind of like getting our rhythm going and getting a good audience started. And then once uh, once we really get it cranking and there's there's a, a, a need for it, I think that's definitely a thing. For sure. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Cigar What's Publican. the best steak you've ever had? Oh, sorry. Honestly, one that I make. I think I make okay. a better steak than any steak I eat out. We okay. do. A, we do. Allison says agree. We do a reverse sear where I put it on the Traeger or on the yeah, offset, yeah. depending on what kind of mood I'm in. And we'll smoke it until it gets to about usually about 115 degrees. And then I'll pull it off the smoker, let it cool down, let it rest for 15 or 20 minutes. And I'll sear it off uh, either on a really hot flame on a, uh, sometimes on a cast iron skillet. And I baste it with a little garlic butter. Oh yeah. yeah, we, yeah with yeah, a few yeah. different ways cool. we do it, but 
doing can you that make reverse steaks se- when we come can you have me and ophelia come and you make steaks? for sure dude we'll do what's your favorite uh cut do you like like a bone-in ribeye do you like a new york strip Lately, I've like been fuck, a bone-in ribeye, tomahawk ribeye. Historically, was one of my favorites, but lately we've been cooking these fillets, and I'm man, they've just been fucking like butter. They're like meat butter. It is. I, I love a fillet. I get them at Costco, and I think they do a great job. Yes. Um, and I also when a, here's the thing about the T-bone. The T-bone always well. well first of all, T-bone. No, I'm talking about Porterhouse. T-bone Porter is House. the best, in my opinion. Porterhouse is great but when a new york strip is good it's really good it's really good i it's agree it's rare that it's great though because it's a fat it's got that fat line on the side and it's hard to get into sometimes and you know but and it can be a little tough but man when they're good they're just great well and you know what else i do the steaks that always really polishes it off is i make a i think they call it a, i think is it called a compound butter I think it's what they call it, a compound butter. It's where basically you take a stick of butter, you let it get soft, you chop up some chives, maybe a little fresh garlic, some herbs, some, maybe some rosemary, whatever kind of little seasonings you want. You fold that into the soft butter and then you roll it up in like um, a saran wrap. So you make a little loaf and put it in the refrigerator and let it harden up into like a, wow. a th- Then you take a big slab of that off when your steak's coming off. You put a big slab of that butter on top and tent it for about five minutes while it's resting and let that butter and all those seasonings melt all over the top. Forget about it, bro. Get out of here. That shit is delicious, bro. It's delicious. She said, get out of here. <laughs> like that. Get out of here. Get out of here. He says, wow. Jeremy stole that recipe from Rogan. You know, Rogan I does make that. mistakes like that, that. for sure. Um, but no, I didn't. I forgot who I found that recipe from. I did hear Joe Rogan yeah. talking about it, and he I, is I a thought huge, the same thing. Oh, he is a huge Rogan advocate, um, but I'm I'm not thinking. I don't think I got it from Joe. I want to say I got it from somebody else. No, 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 no. The the reverse sear. Maybe it was Joe. Maybe I'm misremembering. You know what else that. I like about fillet? You know what else I like about fillet? Watching your weight. You, you don't have to eat a lot of fillet. It's like very an eight rich. ounce fillet is it's foot it's filling. It's very filling. I can and eat, I buy I the whole. Eat, I buy the whole thing at Costco usually, and then ooh, that way I can ooh, cut them whatever ooh. thickness I want. And oh, dude, we that's do nice. Oh, we do big, nice. thick boys that are oh, like looks like yes. a roast beef on its side. Wow, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Wow, I love that man. We got to do steaks when we come up. Well, for sure, a hundred percent. This cigar keeps getting more like I, every time I think it's hit, it's like cruising speed it gets a little smoother and a little more like creamy and sweet and just right down rich home point. rich reminds me of richness of like a cheesecake kind of thing like it's almost overly rich it's very rich love it man yeah and i only i only i see and hear my score i, I rated it an 89 um that's pretty good that that's very good but i feel like maybe when i rated it Cause you know, here's, here's something I think it'd be interesting to talk about. Depending on the time of day, the environment, what you ate beforehand, what you're drinking with it, all these things can greatly impact your experience with a cigar. Yes. I've had cigars and thought they were, eh, and then had them after a different meal with a different whiskey and thought it was the best cigar I've ever had. Um, of course. There's something about this Habiki that is making this cigar. I would probably Better. go up a point or two. I would probably rate it like a 90, 91, maybe a little, little, little higher from what I'm in. You know, also there's something to be said about having good conversation, right? Most of the time when I rank these cigars, I'm up here smoking it by myself and I'm, you know, analyzing it. There's something to be said about when you're having a good conversation with a friend, hanging out, the My overall best- experience. You know, I'm the opposite. I, I just enjoy smoking a cigar with a friend, but I have more euphoric experiences when I'm alone. Uh, no pun intended. What, what? But, I uh, mean, <laughs> are we talking about ex- ex- euphoric experiences? Cigars, you have when you, hold on, Brian. Hold on. It's You know it's coming. <laughs> Can somebody give me a high? I love that. This has exquisite mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> um funny. so so you 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 tend to uh, have a, a a better connection a better experience with a cigar when you're you're by yourself huh 100 percent. yeah i get it it's it's meditative meditative for sure hmm 
My man, Edward, coming through with another super chat. Man, I appreciate you, man. Drinking Penelope wow. Toasted Barrel nice Strength. Thoughts? You know what? We got our Penelope. Do I have, do I have a bottle of that? What color is it, that bottle, Edward? No, that's not the one I have. The bottle I have is, I think it's white this and is, red. I didn't send you one of these. I have one for you. No, you keep saying you're going to. And I, yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, the fucking have, mailman must have yeah, kept yeah. it. I don't know what's happening you'll, with that. You'll but. have it. You'll have it shortly. Have it shortly. Uh, it says, so it, did he get that from you? Is that one that uh, you guys No, did no, no, no. We didn't do a toasted barrel. Oh, okay, uh, okay. This is like I, more of a rye. I don't know if the one I have is the toasted or not. It's in my whiskey closet in there that it's in my overstock i don't i can't go through it at the moment because we're in the middle of a live stream and it would take me a minute but i i don't think the one i have is a toast maybe it is those guys are know. those guys make great whiskey penelope makes some good stuff i was actually at a little event at a local liquor store they had the other day they invited me to i had uh, the george dickel guys were doing a tasting and they asked me if i wanted to come nice. by and say hey to everybody and uh uh, oh, that was a weak one. Dude, that failed. I thought that was going to be a good burp, and then it just died. That was horrible. That was an, that was an embarrassment. Um, but uh, anyway, he was singing the praises of Penelope the other day. He's like, have you had Penelope? I'm like, yeah, I've only had one. He's like, man, you should try all their stuff. They make really, really excellent, excellent stuff. They, they sure do. They sure do. Where is – got to keep throwing that up there so people don't forget to smash that like button. Nice. Helps the algorithm. Clear with gold letters, he says. No. Does it have any red on the bottle? I want to say mine has red on the bottle. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm misremembering that. 350 Could. bottles back there. Dude, there's a bunch. So, well, not back here. I can only hold like 60 or 80. I can't remember the exact count over here. But the whole closet over here, this whole wall here is a big closet, and it's got a big metal heavy-duty shelf in it, and it's just fucking packed with whiskey, which wow. is about to change. I'm about to rip all this shit out of here, and we're going to do a full-length like a 12 wow. foot whiskey wall. Yeah. You were um, telling me that I, I'm interested in seeing that. Yeah, I do just want to. Oh, go ahead. No, go. no, 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 you go. You uh, think gonna I, I'm going to try to video the process. I'm really bad. I always say that I'm going to do a video of, of like the before and then show some of the construction and the after and do like a whole thing. And then I always like get wrapped up in the construction and I end up just showing it when it's done. But I think it would be cool to show the whole process. Yeah. It would be. Hmm. I want you to do a, a truck review. I want a dealership to give you a truck and let you do a review on it. I think it would come out beautifully. I hate the reminder to hit that like button. Worked. He said it worked on him. <laughs> he said uh, I hate that it worked. Uh, <laughs> well, I funny. appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. <laughs> Is Penelope using MGP? I would almost guarantee you they are. Sure. Everyone uh, everybody does, right? uses MGP, I feel But like. they finish they finished their own barrels. What's MGP? It's a huge manufacturer of, of whiskey. But what it is, is a lot of these companies that don't have a distillery, they buy their whiskey from MGP, and then they, they have blenders that blend it into making it what they want, or they'll age it themselves and finish it. So it's a ton of whiskeys or MGP. I might do my next uh, bourbon with MGP. It's not a cheat. A lot of people, because some would argue that the blending process of the making of the whiskey is just as important as the distilling, right? Um, so... You know, not everybody has the capacity to, to distill, so they, they do that. And then some companies also, you got to think about it, Allison, is if you, if you start a, a whiskey company, from the day you start distilling, you don't have a product for like a minimum of two to three years. Minimum. Uh, and most, meat, you know this, but stuff. most bourbon companies don't make their own bourbon. Let's right. The, the, some of them sell gin and stuff to kind of make ends meet until their whiskey's ready. But what a lot of companies have been doing is they'll start distilling and then during the two or three years that they're waiting for their whiskey to mature, they'll use MGP and blend it and try to get the flavor profile they want. And then once their whiskey's matured, they'll start using their own. Even so, Whistle Pig. Whistle Pig just like takes barrels and, and, and finishes them. I feel hey, so bad. Hey, I feel so bad that I talk so much shit about Whistle Pig. I talk. It's weird. So it's so much shit it's, about it. It's, 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 it's something that's good to try, but I, I, it's not something that I, I keep in a collection. I have a Here's my problem. Here's my problem with Whistle Pig. And, and I used to talk a lot of shit about them. And I've talked to the junkies and they've been out there and they said they're actually really good guys and they're very involved in the process and they're huge whiskey nerds and they love it and all that. So I feel bad. I shouldn't talk bad about them just because I don't like. I just I wish it was a little cheaper. I feel like their spirit too, doesn't for for a hundred percent. It's too expensive. It's, it's like, for you know what? what it is, right? Like there's just such great whiskey out there for like 40, 50 bucks. 
And then Whistlepig comes out the gate with like a 10 year rye that's like subpar for like a hundred dollars. And it's like, I ah, was at, man. I was at a, at a, a STK in Disney Springs and we were waiting at the bar and I saw a bottle of Whistlepig and I said, pour me and my friend a shot here. The fucking bill was $400. Right. It was like $200 a pour. We were like, whoa, wait a minute. What just happened here? Mm -hmm. I forget which one it was. It's their high end. It's a fancy schmancy black bottle. I, I don't know. It was really cool looking though. They they do Boss. a good job, man. No, we got a we got a yes, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. We 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 have a place here that just opened up. I think it's called Blend or it's about to open up in Winter Park and they're like it sounds like a bunch of like semi wealthy guys that just buy barrels from all over the place and they blend them together there though. Like you can I think you can be a part of the blending process. I don't know, man, but it's just like come in and try our blended whiskeys. I, I um, I was trying to get a little. I still haven't gotten good at doing this yet. I'm trying to make sure we get little lower thirds up occasionally to remind people. And I, like that. I haven't haven't gotten good That's at great. I haven't gotten good at talking. I need it. Well, the the weeks yeah. that there's not going to be a guest, we've kind of decided because I can't get a guest every single week. It's just yeah. There's too many people. Um, yeah. The weeks that I don't have a guest, Allison's going to be on the live with me, and we're going to do it together. Not that she's going to smoke a cigar because she's not into that, but she's going to help field comments and give me somebody to have interactions with and all the things to keep it keep it. Do you live. ever drink cognac? Do you ever drink cognac with a cigar? You know, you, I think because of you, actually, because you talk about it so much, I went out and bought this. I don't know if this is good cognac. It was one I've that never seen it. It was one that was recommended at the liquor store, and it uh, the guy said, "I don't know if it's uh, uh, where's focus." There it is. Looks cool. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Um, do I like it as much as uh, bourbon? No. I, I I do like bourbon, Scotch, and Japanese whiskey. Yeah. Dude, can I just? I, I know I keep going back to this, but can I just keep saying this? Fucking Habiki is just that good, huh? Dude, it's just, it's really hitting with this cigar really well. Yeah. Um, I'm sad. My cigar's burning too quickly. I'm getting down to a number here. Oh, we need to get to more of the questions then. We need okay, to. Okay, let's do it. Until, in case we get a. Uh, I love we, this cigar though. It is a good cigar. Uh, how do you order your steak? If you could pick any superpower, what would it be? Um, I'd make time stand still. <laughs> that would be a cool one. I've had some cool suggestions, people. Carl was time travel. You know, I always think like superpower flight, you know, like the boring ones that everybody says. Yeah. I've had some people yeah. say some really cool shit. So time that, yeah. dude, that could be dope. I, I've always fantasized about that as a, as a young person. That's, I mean, you think of the shit you could do. It would almost be like you were super fast because you could freeze everybody and then like move and then unfreeze it. And they'd be like, dude, the guy just fucking teleported. <laughs> like, my ass is sore. Why is my ass sore? <laughs> <laughs> Why is my butt sore and a little greasy right. feeling? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Something's wrong. I got to go oh, home. That's so horrible. Um, now, I don't know if you have one of these. Uh, some of these questions you may or may not have a, a direct answer to. Okay. Do you, do you carry a pocket knife? I do not. Okay, so you don't have a current favorite knife. You're not into no. like pocket knives no. or anything like that. No. Okay, it so would we'll, be a razor we'll, blade. If I we'll, carried we'll, anything, it would be a razor blade. A little straight razor. Um, I told you you're the fucking mafia. Uh, mm. Your current favorite gun? It's still the P365, the tactical version. Dude, it's P365. That's my everyday carry, man. Uh, the P365 XL. <laughs> It's been my everyday carry for a while it's now. It's probably the best gun I've ever shot and one of the most genius guns ever made. I mean, for the size and capability, like, is it my favorite gun, period? No. Is it my favorite everyday carry gun? Bar none. Because the size mixed with the capacity, mixed with still being small enough to conceal without feeling like you're carrying around a Buick. Like, Crazy. It's great. It's great. Uh, AK-47 or AR-15? AR, of course. But okay, all that? right. Yeah. Some people are AK guys. So far, everybody that's been on has said a AR without any hesitation. Yeah. Uh, nine millimeter, forty five ACP. Nine millimeter. I would agree. Even though I, I have, in I enjoy forty five more than I enjoy shooting nine millimeter. However, uh, for tactical reasons, reasons of SHTF, uh, <laughs> you, you need nine millimeter. It's yeah, I agree. Round and 
the, the new technology of bullets with the expanding bullets and stuff, you can stop pretty much whatever you oh, need to bro. stop. My, my, <laughs> my, my local gun shop, he carried, I can't remember the name of the bullet now, but dude, he showed me some ballistic testing on this nine millimeter they carry. Not only is it crazy light, so it doesn't make your gun so heavy. I forgot what they make the round out of, but the expansion wow. on it is fucking bananas, dude. It is yeah. some of the technology. I would agree. Even though the 45 ACP is the Lord's caliber. Let's be real. Um, it's, it's, I've never felt more powerful than shooting. Right. But I, I would agree. Uh, I would go nine millimeter these days. Uh, yeah. Okay. This one's probably more up your alley. Favorite cigar cut. Oh, straight cut. Always. That's it. Straight cut. Yeah. You know, I've went through a, a long period there where I was a, a firm V cut man, but, um, I, I think overall, and that's why I started, you know, de designing these scissors that we'll be dropping yeah. here probably maybe hopefully in the next month or two. Um, I just, I've really kind of, I agree, man. I think the straight cuts probably not to say there's not a time for a V cut. Sometimes if you have a plug in the end of your cigar, a V cut can really go through and open up the draw a little bit for you. But um, yeah, man, a straight cut's pretty banging. V cut uh, makes it too airy for me. I don't, I don't like that. It makes it too soft. Cats or dogs? Dogs. What kind of question is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on, here's man. the here's where the fucking rubber meets the road. Pineapple on pizza, delicious or crime against humanity? It's fucking delicious. I don't care what Get anyone the fuck says. Out I love out of here. I feel like I'm in a communist country. Oh, what the hell? Dude, pineapple and ham on a not good everybody. <gasps> no. Yeah. The you ever have a good. You never had a good Hawaiian pizza. It's fantastic. It's like candy <laughs> on your pizza. Dude, I would rather eat a pizza somebody spunked on than fucking oh, pineapple God. on pizza. Okay. That's extreme. Get <laughs> Allison says, but think about it. The spunk on the pizza has exceptional oh. mouthfeel. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. No, man. Yeah, I, I'm a big I love Hawaiian pizza, man. I love anything on pizza. I thought for sure you would be on team pizza purist because you're like a new york guy like i thought you would be on my team here brian i feel like i've been fucking so, abandoned i realized a few things after leaving new york is that a i just don't care i love bread sauce and cheese together it doesn't have to be good b <laughs> i i grew up on this like very unauthentic pizza it was from the farmer's market and we call it cracker pizza and it's literally it's like it's like a cracker dough they give you the dough they give you like kits that you can take home and uh -huh. it's like it's it's like a cracker like you could bake it in any oven and it becomes like a cracker and it's just delicious it was so good they used a mix of cheese they wouldn't tell me what it was uh and it was fantastic it was very untraditional i was at a bowling alley a couple months ago i had a slice of the pizza sitting under the hot heat lamp i thought it was fantastic cheese bread sauce dude you can't it's go a, wrong <laughs> it's a good hey look david says everyone that has been on the show has loved pineapple on pizza crazy shake my head i know david i think i need to reevaluate my friends okay that's all i'm saying i, I think i need to reevaluate my relationships that i'm friends and married to all these freaking so commies oh. jesus christ <laughs> uh your favorite what's your favorite season oof it depends on where in the country we don't have seasons here <laughs> I, I do enjoy winter here right uh, uh -huh. but it's not really so if we're in a place that gets four seasons fall is the most beautiful season of all i would agree fall and spring i get fall and spring i get a little depressed i love spring i think fall and spring you know what you, i will say this i'm i'm a little depressed in fall even though it's beautiful and i'm and i'm uh happier in spring because it's like summer's coming you know it's like yes spring's great I man love spring. i love the weather I, but see fall has not here but in other places the, the leaves turn it's beautiful there's all the beautiful. anticipation of the holidays coming it's, the problem is it gets too cold in fall in most places you're like dude it's october i'm freezing my ass off already. <laughs> well we don't have to worry about that here it's still 90 and i'm out there with fucking swamp ass because i'm sweating to death um now i don't think you really give two shits about this next one but pc or mac oh mac all day Oh, I knew you guys ran Mac, but I didn't know if you had like a firm preference. Oh, I can't use a PC. I, <laughs> thank you. I, okay. Yeah. I, you, you redeemed yourself I, off the pineapple on pizza the shit keyboard, with the Mac. That, that keyboard? No, no, no. <laughs> I can't type with that. Now, this one, I don't remember if me and you have talked about this. Favorite Star Wars movie. Are you a Star Wars guy? Do you do you? I mean, I feel Star like people Wars that guy. were that were in our era have got to because it was such Return a part of, of our the childhood. Jedi. Return of the Jedi. That's a good far. one. 
It's usually it's for people. It's usually, it's usually it's Return best. of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back. Those are the two that people usually say. Okay. Yeah, Return of the Jedi all day. He's in the stone. Han Solo. Oh, man. Come on. That's a great one. <laughs> he says, come on. Come on. Uh, coffee or tea? Well, the truth is I, I I love the way the coffee tastes more than anything. But the, the the sad fact is is that I cannot handle the caffeine in coffee anymore. I don't know what's going on. I just can't really? handle it. So, yeah. And, and the other truth is when I do have tea, especially with cigars with a little bit of honey in there, I go nuts over how good it is. I'm like, I can't believe how good this is. Sometimes I even put cream in it, and it's it's as good as coffee in some cases. I I like tea. I don't have a problem with tea, um, especially a good black tea, like a you know a, a good black. But I, I just it just doesn't hit quite the same for me as it's as different. Coffee. It's different. Exactly. Also, the caffeine in, in tea is different. Like I can handle. Uh, a pretty high octane tea. I, uh, for, uh, there's something else in the coffee that makes it a little more psychoactive. <coughs> Meth. A lot of ang- anxiety and, you know, like, oh, like nervousness for no reason. That's I why I had to stop me. smoking weed years ago, man. Yeah. Stop smoking weed years ago because I, I used to enjoy chilling out with a little bit, you know, back in my heyday. I, and then I it got to where it was giving me anxiety attacks. And I was like, fuck this stuff. This is doing the opposite of what it's supposed every, to do. So years ago, I cut it out. Everyone goes through that. Everyone goes through that. And then in your mid-40s to 50s, you can smoke weed again. <laughs> well, I'm there. But I haven't tried it in years. So we'll, we'll I, I take I'm, edibles. I take edibles. That's what put me over the edge. I got a long story about that. that yeah, I'll oh, no. It'll, 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 it'll totally wet. You got to know. You got to really, you know, gauge it out. And you can't eat too much. And, all, you know. But I also take, if I take it, I take a two to one which is twice the amount of CBD. Uh, uh-huh. And I find it to be much more calming because, yeah, no, I get weirded out on, on weed too. Yeah, man. I, I stopped years and years ago. I stopped because the whole reason I took it was to like relax and think everything's funny and enjoy food and all the things. And right. then it started making me like fucking looking out the windows, yeah. freaking out, panicking. I'm like, the Fuck thing this is, stuff. is this you, is you can, you can, you can enjoy your spirits. I, I get overboard every time. Once that, once I get a, one sip, that's it. It's 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 going down. I'm gonna have five <laughs> six drinks, and I'm gonna be sick the next day. And you know, but see, so. I'm the opposite, man. I um, I am very. You, I would think I have an addictive personality the way I dive into hobbies, but like, yeah, with liquor, I I will have one pour. And I'm perfectly okay with that. I don't need, I don't have the need to have any more back in the day when I used to was younger and I did smoke weed, it started not doing it for me anymore. And I just stopped and never touched it again. And it doesn't bother me. I just, I, I guess I don't have that kind of personality. Yeah, no, you're lucky. Um, okay. And this is the last question and we got, you know, we'll still talk. We got more of the cigar, but this is my last question. Lighting. A, and I know what you're going to say. But I'm going to ask anyway because I throw it in every uh, live stream just because I think it's funny. Lighting a cigar with a Zippo, okay or crime against humanity? If it's if it doesn't if it has the bu- the regular butane, it's a crime against humanity. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is it's pretty bad. It, no, dude, I do it. It's, I love I, it. I, I I agree with you that it, the the flavor w- that will go away after a few puffs, but yeah, you know it's it's affecting the the cigar so i don't want to i don't want anything to affect the cigar fair enough fair enough hold on let's see gotta head out pops wants to have a cigar and watch a movie together much love nice. y'all jared Peace, awesome jared. my brother enjoy the time Jared's, with your Jared's pops so man cool. appreciate you stopping in um have you ever seen a 20 dollar bill on weed <laughs> <laughs> that's what was that from what movie was that from he's like have you ever seen a 20 dollar bill on weed <laughs> i can't remember what movie that was that's funny shit though <laughs> it's true though it's that's weird good. why is that our currency why does it look like it you could really go down a rabbit hole <laughs> <laughs> um we're getting close to the final third and uh, I'm, I'm not ready oh, to i've cl- finished mine I'm not ready to finish up the live yet, but no, me neither. We actually are we're quick guy. tonight. We're like, we bang through it, but what were your final, just to hit final third? Cause like I said, I like to try to keep the, the cigar as central focused and, and make sure we hit all it, the thirds and stuff. It, 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 it got nuttier. It got, it, it, the cream was there. The sweetness died down. It got woody again. Uh, the mm-hmm. wood was more charred, uh, uh, you know, more of a charcoal kind of wood. Uh, and, um, the retro hail was perfect throughout the entire thing. 
I cannot get that retro out of most other cigars, and it's very frustrating. And I think to me in the final third, the nuttiness almost went a little like a nutty coffee flavor. Have you ever had some yeah. coffees that have a very yeah. nutty kind of flavor to them? Yeah. It was like a real sweet nuttiness. And here Hazel in the nut. final, here in the fi- yeah, here in the final third, the sweetness has died down a little bit. It's still sweet, yeah. but it's definitely yeah. come down off when it was really humming along in the middle. And the nuttiness has turned into like a coffee nuttiness uh, kind of kind of vibe that that's yeah. a little bit different. But oh, there's man, coffee there for sure. The thing has burned just. I mean, the whole Perfectly. way through. Yeah, I mean, it's just burned great. The construction's been fantastic. I have had no issues with it. It's, I mean, I'm going to, I still got another 20 minutes on this thing because I smoked down to the bitter end. I, I, I I cannot say more. You know, that's why I volunteered for the Connecticut. I love this cigar, man. I think that there's um, a lot of great Maduros, uh, some great Habanos out there, but I, I think there's very few Connecticut shades that hit like this, man. Now, this isn't one of my list things that I ask every guest, but since we're talking about Connecticut's and wrappers and all the things, do you have like a favorite wrapper leaf? Like something that you, you, you like I lean into like broad leaves and darker stuff. Do you lean into Connecticut's like you're saying? or I lean just- into Connecticut's. Um, I also lean into broad leaf. I also lean into Habano. I, I, the Habano is the OG. It's the... It's the origin story. Really, the Sumatra is the origin story, but the Habano that we smoke today comes from, you know, Sumatra. Um, it, it's it's the Habano is the purists. You know, that's what everyone's look. The entire industry is always chasing that Cuban thing, and Habano is the Cuban seed. You know, so uh, Corojo, whatever you know. Uh, they, they name it a million different things, but really when it comes down to it, you can put it under the blanket umbrella of Habano. So I always smoke Habanos. I do look forward to my Connecticut shades though, man, to my spicy Connecticut shades. We just had one uh, of the Wes Anderson series called uh, the, um, it was the last name of the character, man. Uh, but it was the train, the Whitman. It's called the Whitman. And people were, t- were, were uh, uh, a little taken back by how spicy it was. But for me, it's very Cuban-esque in some ways. And uh, razor sharp burn again. It's got a lighter wrapper than what we just smoked. You know, we really get primo stuff because when you have to put out that San Latino Connecticut every single time and it's got to be the same or similar uh, 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 t- uh, taste, you have to have – tobaccos that you can get consistently year after year after year when we do these limited run things which is everything we do is a limited run we get these great renditions of different stuff and some of them have been the most amazing connecticut's that i've ever had but you're right a good dominican connecticut can beat everything we have this one called the uncle Polly. you've had it oh the uh, uncle Polly, man that's like one of my favorite morning cigars with coffee that's it's the great. best coffee cigar that is it that's <laughs> it's the so coffee. good man so good i've said so it to good. i've told a million people that it is yeah. great really really is and it keeps getting better i've been smoking they're aged three four years already i never i haven't had to make another batch we had a twenty thousand of them or something like that in the beginning um, rune king is uh lighting up the jeremy sub jeremy cyrus habano nice. come on with it nice. can i get uh oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. i love that dude it's uh oh, yeah. it's that's a great he is he sounds just like it he's he's on it he is on it dude my favorite guys and favorite podcast william peterson Uh, uh, Peterson. my my man keep up the great keep up the great work guys patiently waiting for the next social pub episode nice what's up derek they're all hanging out tonight in colorado Edward's popping AJ's in. Last AJ's call. Last Call Habano Bro, is very the good. The Last it is. Call Habano, the Maduro, the Connecticut. The, I, but really that Maduro, the little guy, it's like a little tiny cigar. And I love that. Cigar. I like the the Last Calls that are, uh, does he call them torpedoes or does he call them figurados? The ones that are, Torpedo? Is it? they're very tapered yeah, the, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's I a guess torpedo, he calls them. Pyramid, yeah. pyramid torpedo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I get those all the time. Those They're very great. good. Those are the red wrapper ones or the red band ones, right? Uh, Habano. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's delicious. And then the Maduros you know, are the white and gold band, right? You know, yes, they're great. I'm learning Spanish, by the way. You should. I mean, shit, dude. You have. I'm so learning Spanish to talk to AJ and some of the other uh, uh, blenders that I respect tremendously because I need to be able to speak their language to to further this thing. Because because then I can communicate. Hey, this is what I'm. You know what we're really looking for, or can we make this a little more like that? That kind of thing. You know. So I'm I'm doing my best, man. I, I do about three or four lessons of uh, um, uh, what is it called? Um, Duolingo. Duolingo. Rose oh, I no. she, she's like Rosetta Stone. I, I I had tried Rosetta Stone a long time ago. It didn't work for me, but Duolingo really is working for me, and it's designed to like get people to learn languages fast. I can't dedicate that much time to it, so I think another six months I'll be able to have a conversation in Spanish. So. Well, you know, they say, and let me hit this real quick. Uh, I'm going to crack into this one next. I don't think this is going to go Ooh. as well with the cigar. Well, but that's good and stuff. I don't think Blanton's is is I mean look as I love good as Blanton's. people say it is I don't think it's as crazy as people but uh, it is very good and this was a store pick that I got at my local cigar or my local liquor store that I nice. frequent Shores very good people there if you're local to me definitely check Shores out those guys are fantastic and they have I hate even saying this online because I hate to give away my spot but they really get some good bottles in there um but I have not cracked into the store pick yet and I hey, can you to try can it. you help me out can you help me yeah. out a little bit yeah. can you give well, me a little insight so these that? these ba these barrels that we got from Heaven Hill to uh -huh. age the cigars in right. so they came with a little juice in it and I dumped the juice out and I put uh -huh. it in this container and it's 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 black you can't drink it you have to filter it or whatever no, it, it is it is the most beautiful nose it has to be a very expensive it had yeah. it has to have been a very expensive bourbon just nosing it like it's like it's almost like berries and it, I, I don't know how to describe it it's so huh. amazing on the nose what are, do they make any really high-end bourbons heaven hill uh heaven hill let me think of what heaven hill makes see what they I'm trying to think of what their high-end one would be uh i'm sure they do i'm drawing a blank right now what heaven hill makes isn't elijah craig heaven hill isn't that the same parent they, company they have they have a bottle that's fourteen hundred dollars it's called the heaven hill 27. well yeah i mean all those companies have those crazy old bottles which uh, that 27 probably tastes like shit um and I say that, and that's kind of harsh. It maybe it doesn't. I've just found a lot of super, super old bourbons get a little barrel bitter for me. There's a little bit too much barrel influence by the time they get that old, and they're very oaky. Very, they very do oaky. McKenna, 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 McKenna hit uh, whiskey of the year back a while ago. McKenna they, bottled. They do bottle. Rittenhouse Rye, which I actually like for an inexpensive Rittenhouse High is great for 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 mixed drinks. Larceny, Larceny barrel strength's good. Oh. Old Fitz, and that's kind of like more along the lines because my I had an old bottle of Old Fitz, and it kind of reminded me of that. I don't know if it's an Old Fitz or not. They also do Elijah Craig. Yeah, Elijah Craig. Um, somebody asked what letter was on this bottle. It's a B. It's a B, Joseph. I don't know if you know, uh, uh, Brian, but all the Blanton's bottles, the the caps, the top toppers on them are different. And they have like they spell Blanton's. Um, I went to a guy's house that has like the whole has collection. all of them. Yeah. yeah, that one's a B. That's cool. It smells good. Look, and when I said that about Blanton's, I shouldn't talk shit. Blanton's is great, but Blanton's is one of those whiskeys that's fall fell victim to. It's hit the hype train so high that like, mm. it's a very good whiskey, but like, don't you people feel like have just hyped it to death. To be a lot less expensive it's corn like shouldn't it be less expensive it's very all expensive whiskey, to produce all whiskey should be less expensive than what it is bro like the, the whiskey industry because of the demand has gone bananas and we just did a video on this uh as actually it was live earlier today so if you haven't checked out the most recent video peeps go check it out it's on the main channel um and a lot of people were saying because in there i said the stag you know was around two 250 bucks and they're like, stag shouldn't be two, 250 bucks. Stag's like 60 or 80 bucks. And yeah, MSRP is 60 or 80 bucks. But like, I haven't seen a bottle of stag yeah. at MSRP in 
a decade. Like I, you're, you're I just not going to gonna get it for that Stag price Jr. anymore. Huh? Stag Jr. was my favorite. Stag Jr. Yeah, that's what that's what it was. Um, and you know, people were getting a little butt hurt about me saying not butt hurt, but they were just complaining. They're like, yeah, it's not. I'm like, look, man, I understand. A lot of these whiskeys, the MSRP is way cheaper, but you're. It's useless for me to say the MSRP when nobody's going to fucking find it at that price. Like it's yeah. just. You, Maybe some people can. I haven't seen a bottle. First off, I only see a couple bottles of stag locally a year. And when I do see them, they're 200 minimum. I mean, that's Jeremy, just. I'm gonna, give me one sec, okay? I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. Stick. Okay. yeah, sure. Um, they're like $200 minimum. Uh, and while I agree, that's crazy. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, Rune King, super chat. Thank you, my brother. I was able to get an Arturo Fuente rare pink sophisticated hook. Or, well, I'm going to ask Brian about that. What a great cigar. I don't. R rare pink sophisticated hooker. What a fucking name. Is that the real name of the cigar? A rare pink sophisticated hooker? Brian, is that a is that the real name of that cigar? Arturo Fuente rare pink sophisticated hooker? Is that a thing? I, I don't. He, he they do some pretty crude they had one called pussy juice <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ um rare I bet you bill clinton likes that one. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, rare rare pink uh is a is a big deal for them right now i had one i thought it was terrible if i'm being honest um when I did arturo fuente go all like i mean look it, i'm a pretty crass been. guy but I thought they were more like a high end bougie cigar. I'm surprised to hear that they're dabbling in the in the in the schmutz. I think they always have. It's just they don't put it on the actual product. It's just like a nickname. Ah, uh, gotcha. Can I get a hiya? Dude, it sounds just like it. Let's let's do a comparison. Brian, get it. You do one. Can I? Well, I gotta hear him first. Let's do that. Be better. Oh, hi <laughs> Dude, it's, it's dead on bro that is like I, i've got I'm, a new skill my friend well you know you know brian had if i don't know if you know allison he had a uh in his previous life he was a artiste he was a singer in a band yes i was yeah so he has very um trained vocal cords yes. oh yes. yes 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 no i that's, was listening to some of my music the other day dude when i i, I uh, I forgot why I pulled you up online. I think I was pulling up, trying to pull up some, a picture of you or something to put on uh -huh. like something for and on my SoundCloud. Yeah. Dude, it's like the first thing that pops up for you is your SoundCloud. Yeah. I would have thought it would have been Pravada cigar club would be the first there's thing. Some great, there's some great songs in there too. It's wild. That's yeah. wild. I, I just realized I've been running off Wi-Fi this whole time. I forgot to do my wire. You, you look clear as could be, though. Yeah, I mean, so far the Wi-Fi has been holding steady. Yeah. Number 10. He says number 10 cigar aficionado 2022. The hooker cigar. Oh. The pink hooker. Wow. That's wow. They call it the pink hooker. Wow. Huh. That's interesting. I'm a, uh, uh, you know, well, whatever. That's wild. I, I have even... tremendous respect for the uh, Fuente family. I just want to say that. Yeah, I mean, oh, and I've said that before because I've said, and I think it was in a live or something recently, I said that I'm not a huge Fuente fan as far as their cigars. There's a couple of them that I really like, but yeah. uh, in the utmost respect, and I completely appreciate that they, they are a top-tier cigar manufacturer and all those things. There's just something about their flavor profiles that just aren't my Fuente, cup of tea. Fuente is proof that the biggest market – are the novice market is in my opinion right so let, uh, let me give you the this isn't a dig at them the the market that i have are gung-ho about cigars there's only so many of us that are this passionate about cigars uh-huh to sell at the level of a fuente you have to crack into what i call the novice market these are people that only have a cigar at the golf course or at a wedding or something like that but when they walk into a shop guess what they're buying fuente yeah every time well because it's, it's, it's one of those names that's synonymous with cigars right like every humidor you go in they're going to have fuentes like it's just they're one of those juggernauts in the industry that like but 
and, and that's why I said the utmost respect for those guys and what they do. For sure. But other than a couple uh, exceptions, for the most part, they're they're just not rolling stuff that's right down my home plate, right? That's that's not a dig against them. I know they make fantastic stuff. There's a lot of people that are huge fans. Um, and maybe I should they try are this. Part pink of hooker. every cigar smoker's journey. Mm-hmm. And there comes a time where a lot of cigar smokers will 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 move on to other things. But yeah. it is a part of every cigar smoker's journey. And that's what I'm saying. It's usually the beginning of your journey. And it would seem as though that buying dollar, that buying power is bigger than actual people who smoke cigars. Because there's like 40 million people that will try a cigar. Like I said, at the golf course, right? there's only like 30, 40, 50,000 of us that really like are into it on this level. Mm, I agree. I don't know. Then, then he also meets the super high end level with the Opus line. So those things well, go for so much money. It's crazy. And and that's the other thing, right? And this, I almost don't even want to say it in a public forum because I feel bad, but like, I don't get it. I've had multiples of those cigars and don't get me wrong. Excellent cigars. Construction's perfect. They're beautiful. The bands are beautiful. It's a beautiful cigar, but it's just not my... Yeah. It's not my lane, right? And they're so expensive that it's like they're when I've had unique. them, I'm like, when I've had them, I'm like, man, like it was a good cigar, but like for me, it would probably rate in the high 80s or low 90s at best. And it's like a $20, $30, $40, depending on the the, the cigar. And it's just like, oh, I don't know, man. I just, yeah, I'd almost rather have a New World Oscuro for eight bucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, but that's not a dig against them. That's my palate, right? That's, right, that's, right. you know, that's why I say I almost feel bad saying it, but, um, you know. Great company, date. great history, a uh, 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 big part of Ybor City history. Um, just, you know, it's a staple in this industry. It's just not where we're at in our journey right now. David, what's up in California? Hey. Nice. Don Julio. Um, let's see. Who else we got going on here? Oh, here's one for you, Brian. For me? Yep. What what's the turnaround on Provada order shipping? Need some sticks. The same day. I mean, if you place the order tonight, it'll go out tomorrow. Oh, so we don't mess around with the speed. Sometimes the post office is off their game, but lately post office has been cracking. So if you order, depending on where you are in the country, you could have it by the following day or two days later. We just had someone test us in Maryland and he said it got to him on the second day. So we're doing wow. great on that. Fulfillment is what we do. In fact, we're now offering uh, brands that don't want to warehouse and fulfill their own orders. Uh, we're doing it for them. Real quick, Piper on the Bay. Thank you, my brother, for stopping in and hanging out, man. Have a great evening. Um, I agree, man. You got, and I mean, I can't say about you guys shipping because it's excellent, but like, I don't know if you guys, we always talk. So, I, you know, it's like I, if people say that, oh, yeah, Jeremy, of course you get good shipping. You're like, no, Brian, you guys hang out and stuff. But no, yeah. no, no, you don't. You, we don't. We ship it out the same same way. You're just in Florida, too. So you're going to get it the next day. Yeah, dude, I get shit crazy fast. Um, yeah. But I know if I say that, people are going to say that I'm biased. But speed, um, speed and humidity are, are the two things that I like to focus on um, when it comes to uh, shipping cigars. Hit that like button. 215 people only. 10 likes. What? Only 10 Hit likes. It. Oh, okay. That's now I see it. 161 likes. I was like, dude, are you right, Mike? If Mike's right, y'all need to be hitting some like buttons, bitches. Um, let's see. Where's my what Provada people at? Let's see. Hey, Jeremy. Let's see. Hey, Jeremy, you started that best cigar for beginners and only did part one. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Shaw, that was a fail on my part, bro. That was right. I started that series right when it kind of came to a part where the main channel was so busy and YouTube was really cracking down and they like, they age restricted a ton of my videos and they were really giving me a hard time about cigar content. And I, um, I, so I, that's right when like I stopped making videos for like eight months on this channel. And that's why I came out with this series to try to make it to where I'm doing cigar content more frequently. I don't know if I'll ever go back and finish that. Maybe we'll finish well, it on a live or something. Your, your YouTube videos are like, you know, 
fucking Martin Scorsese. <laughs> well, thank them. You. So it takes time. By the way, I mean, it takes me a full week throw, to do a video, and I don't get in. And this is what I do for a living. Roll up. Can you throw that B roll up for a second? Yeah. Which do you want the whole reel? But, uh, either one. Yeah, throw the whole reel up. I just want to talk about this while you. Okay. People at home, you don't understand how hard it is <laughs> to get a shot like this. This requires time, lighting, energy, know-how, equipment. Th I mean, this is impeccable. This is as good as any commercial shoot that would take 15 people on set to do. Very, Brian, I'm, I'm, very you can't hard. see me. We're off camera, but I'm blushing over here. I'm brushing. Brian's my, <laughs> true. Brian's my best hype man in the world, dude. I love Brian. We, when we first saw you, look at that. What are you? Okay, so pause that for a sec. I can't pause doing, it, unfortunately. You're, you're doing something different on the light here. There's a different color, or so you introduce something here. You I have, have an a, orange. I have an orange light in the back, is. and and you okay. can see it in the. Uh, it's also filmed on an anamorphic lens, which is why you're getting that blue lens flare. Uh, you see, and I've got a light got pointing it. straight at the lens, so you get the blue lens flare. And then Oof. there's the main lighting, and then there's the key light, and then there's an orange tube light in the back that's kind of putting uh, a little uh, side kick light Oof. of a more orange color Oof. on them. That shit is sexy, bro. You should do a commercial <laughs> for these, for these well, big thanks, liquor companies, man. man. I'm blushing, man. I'm blushing over it's here. It's so hard. I know how hard it is. My, well, my, but, new guy, my new guy, Tyler, is getting up to speed so fast. I'm so impressed with this kid, man. But to to reiterate on, on that, just to say, so yes, that's kind of why it stalled out for a while because it takes me a good week to film a video with the shooting and the editing and all the things. And because YouTube was being so hard and – it's not monetizable to, for cigar content, um, which is why you know these things are great. Live, uh, the super chats are always appreciated um, because stuff on the main content, I get sponsors and YouTube lets me monetize it, and this is what I do for a living. So it was getting hard to cut out a week of my shooting schedule for cigar stuff that I knew I was going to make zero dollars on. Um, so it was it was kind of tough, but that's kind of why the cigar stuff took a huge dip and that's why I came up with this idea for leaf and barrel live. And hopefully this can kind of get the ball rolling again. And it doesn't take me as long to do a live because it's, it's live. The editing is not there. I mean, I do the B roll and a little bit, but it's not near as intensive as when I do um, full videos. I wish I could share. I, I got to try to get you some more of the subterranean stuff. These cigars were just, they were Sub fucking I, outstanding. You did send me some, and I remember liking them. I can't remember any specific notes or anything like that, but I do remember it being a good cigar. Brian is correct. My monthly Pravada Club shipping, the post office messed up. My label didn't get it, but Pravada sent right away and threw in an extra cigar. Love, Pravada. Thank you, Lucas. Pravada coming through to make sure the people are happy look i can't i'm on this journey i can't do it without them so my idea was to serve them better than anyone else could possibly serve them so we can pool this money together so that we can go out to these factories and farms and learn the real deal and get stuff like this i mean this is you can't find a cigar on shelves like this we do have some regular production that are also back you know blue cheese uh cigar one cream i mean we've got some pretty legendary little cigars out there that will become legends over time Real quick, David Stewart, my brother. You know, I love you, man. Appreciate you stopping in. Have a good night. Um, yeah, you guys do fun stuff too, man. You don't take it too seriously all the time, which I like, right? Yeah. Like there's a time for for taking it seriously and, and being real about it. And there's a time for just having a good time. And you guys do that. You know, you you do, and I, I don't know if I should even say this because I know there was some heat around this, but you guys did the cookie monster. And you do all these fun, like lighthearted things to just make it fun, you know? You know what? It was all by accident. I have a certain appeal, uh, a like, you know, with 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 art. There's a certain nostalgic, not 80s, 90s, early 2000s, like pop stuff that I like. And it really translated well on cigars. I had no idea that that would happen. I had no idea Cookie Monster would become the most viral thing to happen in cigars in the last, I don't know, 10 years. <laughs> Bro, that cigar like, went crazy. I had, people, I had a guy, my neighbor came up to me with his phone out and he's like, hey man, you're into cigars because they have no idea who the fuck I am. He was like, hey, you're into cigars. Can you get me this cigar? He's in a whiskey group and everyone was talking about it. And I look at it and, and it's you're like, it's my cigar. 
I said, Ophelia, you're never going to. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We crossed That's over, That's one of those man. moments, right, where you're doing this. You're like. Yes. Yes. We did it. We did it, man. It That's so awesome, dude. That oh, by awesome. the way, I also, we made these. There's actual cookies in here. They're little cookies. That's awesome. Okay. Is so it with, you send it with the cigars or what? Any anytime anyone orders uh, something more than fifty bucks, they get a cookie with it. Except for subscriptions, but if you like order on the shop, fifty bucks, you get a cookie with it. You get a cookie. What do you want a fucking it, cookie? Here's a cookie. It's a little. It's a little something extra just to say we love you. <laughs> What's this? Uh, the guy, uh, Bearded Moon, the guy that did the blue cheese review on Cigar Public, must be super. S- squared away lol i don't know what that means i don't think it got the highest score but it was fantastic bearded moon i love you bro what's up uh i don't think it got a high score and he may have done the actual review you know on cigar public we have a whole team of reviewers they all review blind they have no idea what they're getting and we use a rating system that's it's a little more difficult than most of the other uh sites uh so you don't see these you know really high reviews often but but when you do it's like you, you need to go check it out I keep meaning to get on there more. When you first launched it, I got on there, I made an account and I tried to make an effort to be on there. But dude, I just stay so fucking busy that like one more social media platform is like impossible. That's, that's, that's social dot cigar public, cigar public, the, the media site, uh, the, the, you know, cigar lifestyle site. Um, that one uh, is is where we do the reviews. Social didn't take off because like you said, no one wants to cross over uh, to a different platform. Well, it's just tough because I feel like the market is so saturated with social media platforms. It's like mm-hmm. you got the Twitters and you got the TikToks and you got the Instagrams and the YouTubes and the Facebooks. I keep the- it there. I keep it there in case shit really hits the fan and they get rid of cigars, period, off of yeah. Facebook. Then 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 we're here. We have a we have a place to go and you can sideload an app now. Uh you have to sideload it. It's not easy, but uh, we have an app, so so well, you know, that's, that's. a lot of folks on the, the, in the cigar community have been going over and getting uh, Rumble. They've been mm-hmm. loading videos on Rumble, uh, which is like a YouTube. A YouTube uh, that shit's about as exciting as a trip to the dentist. That's the problem, Rumble. man. And that's oh. why, you know, that's why it's just like, it's just hard to compete with YouTube, man. Their interface, they've had years to really like hone this thing into something that's great. They got no audience on Rumble. We they, need they the got, audience. I, I They're wish fucking they were, with us. So do you you see my page, how nice some of the stuff we do is? And we're just now after five years at 25,000. I mean, we really weren't kicking until a year or two ago. But tw- I grow by what you grow in a day. I grow by we, we've been reported so many times. We just don't algo at all. Well, and. I was going to say that. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to say, if you guys don't follow Pravada Cigar Club's YouTube page, you should definitely go give them a follow because you guys do put out, in my opinion, some of the best cigar content on the internet. Thank you. Um, that means a lot coming from you. S- some of your trips and stuff that you guys have done to, to different yeah. places. and the, I mean, it's cinematic. It looks good. The, the, the cinematography is excellent. The, the uh, storytelling no is excellent. It's, it's, there, it's fucking great. There's not a lot of people doing that. And there, it's a shame... No it's a shame that I'm YouTube sorry. has stunted that stuff so much no, because it's no. it's great content and it makes it difficult to keep up when you're not seeing any of the fruits of your labor, you know? Yeah, I know. And and, and I'm and, glad you and, guys are still fighting the good fight though, man. Keep it up. Yeah, and and we're going to upload those things to other channels and other places and stuff because it has to live on. No one's done this stuff since aficionado back in the day. They really don't take the trips and and, and meet the real people. And so I'm proud of that. And I know that that will live on for, you know, years and decades to come. It's, it's great, dude. You guys are doing fantastic stuff. Dude. Thank fantastic. You so much. Fantastic. It, 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 and it, it's like I said, it's a shame, man. I wish that YouTube didn't get involved and take such a hard stance on certain things. And I wish it was more like it was in the YouTube of old, say six, seven years ago before they started really cracking down on yeah. all this stuff and just let people do what they want. And if there's an audience for it, then great. If there's not great, like whatever, and them not take their spin on what's safe and what's okay to say and what's not okay to say. It's like, it's just, I don't know, man. It is what it is, though, and it's a private company, and they're they have yeah. the right to do what they want, whether I agree with it or 100%. not. So I mean, I can't, you know, there's no one to complain to, so no one's going to listen anyway. So, well, it's the same thing with guns. It. 
It's the same thing with guns. They've just taken a real hard stance on certain things. And um, it's unfortunate because it's they're all perfectly legal hobbies that a ton of adult Americans participate in. And um, we get censored. You know, we get particularly YouTube's uh, viewers. Yep. It's 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 a shame. It really is. But again, private company. What are you going to do? Yeah. You know, they, they, they can do what they want. Nothing. Until there's a competitor, and, and that's why I wish a company like Rumble would take off because I think if there was a little bit of a competitive situation out there, they might be a little more like, hey, we can't do whatever we want because if we do, we're going to lose people, but they know nobody's going anywhere. Uh, it's another company that probably uh, loses money every year, but it's the potential creates investor opportunities that fund the whole thing. You know, I mean, I don't know if you know it or not, but Uber loses eight billion dollars a year. What? L loses eight billion dollars a year. It is strictly around for the time when cars become autonomous. It will crush everything. Wow, dude, that's a uh, interesting question. And then we'll we'll start wrapping it up because my cigar's almost done. Your cigar's been done, and I'm trying to keep these at about the two hour mark because it's a weeknight and people, you know, got work yeah. the next day and stuff. Um, but you know, uh, and I think we talked about this on the, on the podcast one time, but, uh, I know you have an electric car, uh, yes. and I, I think electric cars are cool. My yep. only thing is, you know, you have a lot of these areas and States and government agencies really pushing like everything to go electric. And I couldn't disagree with that more if I tried mm -hmm. only because I, I look, I think there's nothing wrong with an electric option. I think they're mm -hmm. cool. But to make it to where that's our only option, I think, is craziness. And California is a perfect example of it. You know, they had these rolling blackouts and stuff because, yeah. you know, they have power grid issues and whatnot. And if you've got an electric car and the power grid's down and you can't charge your car, now you have no fucking transportation. Anywhere. Right. Yeah. So I don't know, man. There's Like you guys, electric car is one of your cars, but you have yeah. also a gas-powered car. Great, we have the but Jeep. I can yep. never see a time where I would want my only car, my only transportation options to be electric. I just can't see that ever. Like Florida, we have hurricanes. What if a hurricane comes through and the power grid's out for a week or two weeks? What are you going to do? You got nowhere. You can't drive anywhere. Your fucking car's mm -hmm. dead and you're screwed. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I'm just, I, I, I like electric cars. I like that they're there. I like that it's an option, but this whole initiative to the go. The only thing I can tell you about electric cars, I don't, I never really thought about it as, as the green part. There's two things that happen to you when you drive. I can only speak about a Tesla, although the new Kia is pretty dope too. Um, first of all, the speed is astronomical. It yeah, is, the speed's crazy, it is, bro. It's, it, it's, it's bananas. I love it. I, I love the feeling so much. Um, also, it's like being strapped to a rocket. Yeah, it's a rocket. <laughs> uh, and the Tesla has an audio system that I've been in world-class studios. There's nothing that compares to the audio in this thing. It is the most unbelievable audio experience I've ever had in my life. Um, and I listen to all types of shit in there, like classical recordings and shit, just to hear, like you close your eyes, man, you're in that hall. It's, it's just amazing. Um, the other thing is, is, you don't realize it until you don't have to go anymore, but gas stations fucking suck. <laughs> they suck. The well, drink. And it's right the now, one place where you could get robbed dude. very quickly too. Woo. It's like a dr dregs of society at every fucking, you know, gas station. So this is interesting. Piper in the Bay says use a gas powered generator. Now my question with that is that could be a viable option. But A, you're still having to use gas, so it's like, why not just cut out the middleman and just fucking have a car that runs on gas? But B, how long would it take to charge? Are our, our, our generators pumping out the kind of power that would charge? Bro, how about the uh, Ford F-150? The Ford F-150, one of their selling points is you can run your house on it for four days if the power goes out, if it's fully charged. <clears throat> I don't know the how their, <clears throat> their system works if you can go back in, but they're saying... It's a generator of itself, basically. Well, and this is, a, and uh, Mike brings up a point. There's not enough infrastructure to support EVs, plain and simple. And that's something I've heard. And I don't know. I need to do a little more digging to find that's out. But I heard it's changing daily, though. 
Well, I've heard that there literally isn't enough because some of the minerals that go into uh, making those lithium batteries, I've heard there's literally not enough of that on the planet to make enough batteries to change over all the cars that we currently have to electric. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's it's strictly it's strictly there to uh, try to get off of fossil fuels while looking into other you know technologies that are more mm. progressive, like the. Uh, Though, trust me, the second we run out of oil, the second power really becomes a, a problem, we'll, your car will run off water. They've had hydrogen <laughs> engines. Uh, you that's will gonna see be, the inventions. That's going to be long after I'm long. Into, dude, I've seen some some estimates of how much oil we have left. We don't have to worry about that shit for a long fucking time, bro. <laughs> like, we got some time. It will be a problem eventually, though, I think. I heard it's only like 40 years. No, I've heard some, I've heard that, but then I've also heard some other people say that's bullshit and we have like hundreds of years left before we're out. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You never know who you're getting your data from now. It's like, fuck, who gives a shit? I just tried, my <laughs> wife wanted the car. I got the car. I fell in love with it. I still bought the Jeep. I still love, a, 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 you know, a good engine. But I'll tell you right now, after driving the Tesla, you get in a car and you're like, this car is fucking stupid. This is a stupid car. No, the way I agree. it drives, the way it feels, there's all these parts. I said to them when we got the car, I said, well, what do we do for maintenance? They said, what maintenance? You get brakes done and that's it. You know, and, and that's why I say I, I love electric cars. I think they're awesome. I just wouldn't, I don't want them to make it a thing where that's our only option. I feel like that is a bad call. Having Bro, them out what? there for people. Huh? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. But no, you're why good. Why can't, why can't can't you have a hybrid that the i don't understand if if a if a if a wind turbine can create electricity right why can't the uh uh tires the the motion of your tires rolling all the time why isn't that why can't we generate why isn't that recharging the battery as you go yeah. like almost like an yeah, alternator in a, in a gas powered right. car well, yeah, I don't deal with that? understand that either. I'm sure somebody way smarter than us can give you a reason why that isn't the thing, why that doesn't work. But yeah, it almost seems like it would be like a maybe it can't generate enough to recharge it. I don't know. Like I said, that's I above that's my pay grade. Because you have <laughs> two, you have two modes in an EV. You have a brake regenerating mode, which you don't have to use your brakes as much. You just take your foot off the gas, and it it slows down, and it supposedly uh, uh, generates. Uh, more power huh so your battery i don't know man last it's long. weird and we could go down the rabbit hole of stuff quickly and and then i'll put on my tinfoil hat that i put on i, the I hate it sometimes. i hate it that being progressive like or wanting to be progressive that gets looked at as either you know you're this or you're that or you're into these politics or that. i just thought it was was cool and we got it and i fell in love with it but um, I see both sides, man. You know, there's no. a lot of people that'll tell you some terrible things about what EV uh, batteries are doing to the world. Like it's not good. No. Well, and that, and that's kind of my point, right? Is like, do I think that they're a good alternative? Yes. Do I think they should be things where government's putting in that we have to do this by a certain year and all this. And all. there's a lot of companies that have gone completely away from gas and their whole lineup's going to be electric as of this year. Like, yeah, I'm out on that. Having it as an option, great. They're super cool. They're fast as fuck. They have a lot of cool technology. I think it's awesome, but just don't make it our only option. I'm just, yeah, for sure. I, I'm out on that situation. Plus, let's just be real. Let's just let's just let's just have a little let, let's 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 get a little close. Let's have a conversation. Nothing feels better than cranking up a V8 with a good exhaust system and hearing that I rumble. Have a, I and have hearing that rumble, fastest. baby. That rumble. I have the so this is what I'll say. I have the Trackhawk Jeep is seven hundred seven horsepower Hemi Hellcat. Um, bro, they made it so quiet. I bought mm -hmm. it because I fell in love with the Charger and I was like, I want muscle, but I want the room in an SUV. So I'm gonna get this. It was hard to get. I, I had the opportunity to get one. I got one, but it's so quiet. You don't you, you don't realize how fast it is until you punch it, and then it it does this ripping sound. Dude, it's, it's like a it's, black, black. It's like crazy. Uh, like, ah, yeah, dude. It's like aggressive, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> <That's either. laughs> that is the thing. That is the 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 raw like feeling you get from that. You can never simulate with an electric car, right? There's just something combustion. There's something about it, dude. There's something about it. 
Uh, sexy as Gulf hell. Coast now, I can EDC. put a different exhaust on. I can put Real a different uh, exhaust on, but then you, you avoid the warranty on the, uh, whatever. <laughs> That's yeah. a whole nother thing. Uh, hey, Gulf Coast thanks, EDC, Gulf Coast. Super Fast Shipping Bravada, and the chocolate chip cookie is pretty oh, damn good nice. as well. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. <laughs> Look at him. He's just sitting there chilling with his stogie. Yeah, he's Look a at good him. Guy. He's, this is why I love cigars. He's a good people, man. Uh, having a good old time, man. Having a yeah. good old time. Uh, Rune King says, amen. Dude, I'm telling you, there's something about the sound of a big engine that just is addictive, man. It's just you can't. I didn't mean to go off on a, a political thing because I know that that conversation gets political really quick and I don't yeah, mean for yeah. it to be political. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm standing. Uh, there's with- nothing. No, there's nothing like that. And I'm telling you that that charger was not half as fast as this. But the sound of it was so great, you didn't care, man. You just wanted mm-hmm. to step on the gas to hear more of it. It was, beautiful. and there's something about just even when you're sitting in the car and it's idling, the rumble and the noise yeah. and the, you know, and yeah. it's just, and when you floor it, the whole fucking car twerks a little bit from the fucking yeah. power of that yeah, engine going. Rah, 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 rah. It's just, uh, bro, dude, I almost ran off the road the other day. <laughs> there, I took, I, I took the, uh, the traction control off and I hung a hard turn from a stop and gunned it, and boy. My ass end put me. I was looking. I was looking back towards where I came from. <laughs> I was you're like, like, "Oh no!" You're like, "I just want ass over it. tea kettle, bro. This is I, fucked I'm up. In, I'm going the wrong one of way." Those, one of those epic fail videos, mm-hmm. and I almost went over the meat. I almost went over the median, and there were cars coming. I was like, "Fuck! I got to chill out." Dude, there is something, and Danny uh, says it's primal. It is, dude. There's just something about it that's just like Ugh. primal. Just gets all the fucking man juices flowing, bro. You're yeah. just like, yeah, fucking get did you it. Hear, did you hear that the liver king took a steroid test and it came back and his results were that he's primal? <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's where that well, comes from, that primal. I think it's funny that, that that was a big thing that came out that he was taking steroids and it's like, no shit. <laughs> like, duh. Uh, I mean, that guy's juice to the gills, bro. First off, isn't bro. he like in his 50s? Whatever, whatever money he's made from doing this shtick, uh, which it is a shtick of sorts. Um, oh, 100%. He, deser- he deserves it. He's eating uh, donkey testicles and, I mean, liver. <laughs> by the way. He's like eating raw liver. By the way, if it's between me eating donkey testicles or taking steroids, just give me the jab, bro. I'll take the fucking <laughs> – I'm on the gear. I'm not eating donkey testicles, dude. But he swears that he's not on stuff. It's all these raw meats, these liver. No, it, he came out. He admitted that he took them. He was, well, that he was on TRT, right? Like – that he was taking testosterone replacement therapy, just a healthy level, blah, 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 blah. That's not T. That's not test. That is or steroids. <laughs> yeah, dude. Anybody that's as red as that guy from his blood pressure being through the fucking roof from all the juice and like as swole as he is, like, because like I said, I think he's in his like mid to late 40s or maybe even 50s. Nobody in that age bracket is that muscly. I don't care what you're eating. I don't care how much you're working. That's like The Rock. No, I told somebody the other no. day that The, the Rock, oh I'm like, dude, God. he takes all the gear. And somebody was like, really? All the Rock takes steroids? I'm like, oh are you fucking God. kidding me? Of course he takes steroids. Dude, what do you mean? Look at that fucking guy. The Rock used to promote natural when he was younger. He used to promote natural bodybuilding. Um, uh, the Rock's, uh, I believe his uncles or cousins are the, uh, remember WWF, they had the two... Samoans, the wild Samoans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he he is Samoan. He's half African American, yeah. half Samoan, right? Yeah, those are like his cousins or something. So uh, he's from Lehigh Valley, same same place that I'm from, and um, and he he came and did a show at the hotel one time, and it was for like natural bodybuilding. But listen, whatever he did in like the last decade, he he took it to the max. He's bigger than twice Winstrol. as big as he ever was. Winstrol and Decca, and maybe some Trent, some. Uh, what is it? Trend? What's the new shit? Trend? Tran? What's the new stuff? Uh, trend? It's a new story. It wasn't around back when I was in my youth. That'd be and, awesome. And, just to start pumping this shit. In. You got to work your ass off, though. People think you just take the shot. No, no. I mean, it. you still got to work out hard. <laughs> I mean, it, it only increases what you're doing. But uh, for sure, he's on the juice. Because Rock's in his 50s now. And somebody just said he's he uh, he's 45, the Liver King guy. Majorly. Yeah. Majorly. At 45, juice. you're not looking like that unless you're on the juice, bro. You're so just the not. gills. Fight me. And you You're can't not. at 40 you can't work out that much without hurting yourself all the time. You, no. You just 
at 45, your, your natural testosterone is starting to, you're, you're past your heyday of testosterone production. Right. Um, and, uh, you're just, you don't look, can you be big and healthy with eating well and, and doing all of your things and working out? Absolutely. Yeah. You can be big, sure. you can be muscular, you can be healthy, you can be all those things. Rock is a fucking unit, bro. Like that guy bro. is, you don't get that it's big insane. without the juice. It's insane. It's insane. Uh, by the way, they're all on juice. Uh, I watched something. <laughs> Ryan I, I watched. By the way, they're uh, all on juice. <laughs> just fucking just getting back to it. I, I, I watched Creed 3, and I was so impressed with the physiques, physiques on these young men. And, you know, uh, uh, I, I did a lot of research, and people are like, look, you, you just can't lose the body fat and put on this much muscle in six months without using something like this. Right. You're just not. Here's a question for you, Brian, as we're closing out, because we're going to wrap it up here in the next five guys, about five more minutes, and we're going to sign off for the night. Question about the monthly cigar club for Canada. Who is doing the fulfillment? Can we pick up directly from the cigar chief, chef, chief? Yes. Yep. Chief, the chief, Indian chief that's distributing our product for us, thankfully. And we're able to get around taxes and tariffs because he's a native Canadian. So, um, you can absolutely do that. I don't see any problem with that. I mean, that's not the way we set it up, but I'm sure if we said, hey, we have a guy that wants to come in. and Do, I mean, do they have a place or... where they could go and pick it up? Do, oh, I mean, yeah. Like a... yeah. Oh, yeah. You... yeah. So there is like a hub or something where they could go. And... Yeah. Yeah. I, I could tell you where it is. Uh, cigar Chief Location. <laughs> Brian says uh, it's, it's probably just his sweet diet of pancakes and tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's doing it. Uh, oh, beautiful website. <laughs> Nimrag says, I'm 46 and I look like I ate a guy that was on juice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three, they're on Airport Road in Deseronto, Ontario. So they're out in, uh, I would think, near Toronto somewhere, but they're in Ontario. So uh -huh. yeah, 100% uh, they can go out there. Nice, nice. <laughs> Whoa, if my testosterone is lowing, why are my jewels so big? I don't know, bro. Maybe go to the doctor. <laughs> Maybe you got a problem. <laughs> I mean, how big are we talking? Are we talking like, you know, like elephantitis? Are we talking you got two like tennis balls going on down there? Like you can't sit right? Like what are we talking about? You might want to get that checked. I'm just saying. If they're yes, huge, you, huge. Yes, you do. <laughs> un uncomfortable too. You sit on them and stuff. For sure. Dude, if... Okay, this is going to – we're at the last we, – we only got 200 people left, so it's, it's dwindling at this point. So I feel like I could go to like some stranger places that I don't like to go earlier in the, in the live stream. Yeah. And this doesn't happen until you get older. Have you ever sat on your balls? Oh, yeah. That Dude, happens. that never happens, by the way, before you're no. like in your mid-30s, right? Like in my 20s, I never did that. Never. But then once you get your 40s, you go to slide in your truck and they get pinned between your truck seat and your leg and you just crush your sack, bro. You crush it. And you're like, oh, God. And it's just miserable. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah so that's like, yeah. for you guys that are still in your 20s and early 30s. That's what you have to look forward to. I try to wear like jeans and stuff from my youth. And I'm like, nah, that doesn't look right. You got one ball on one side, the other on the other. Oh, God, I'm like an old man already. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta, where you are my got joggers? Like a, where you are got my a joggers? Version at? Of a camel toe. It's like all like weird. Yeah, oh, like, God. <laughs> some, 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 guy, some guy, they took a picture of me uh, in Costa Rica and, and they were like having fun with the picture drawing on it and stuff. But there's three of us. And someone pointed out that it looked like that was going on in this picture. I'm not sure what was happening in that picture, but not a picture I love. You're like, you're like, wow, that's not doing me any fucking no. favors whatsoever. It look sexy. It's well, dude, that's sexy. why I'm glad skinny jeans kind of like made their way out because when that was like in fashion, everybody was wearing them. Like you couldn't, it was harder to go out and find a normal pair of jeans. And I never, I do not look good in je skinny jeans, bro. It's not my jam. You know what I mean? And it's also, if you carry a firearm pack, you know. in your pants, yeah, it's really yeah, hard it's to carry much. a firearm with pants yeah. that fit you like you fucking painted them on. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a 45 year old guy doesn't need to be wearing skinny jeans, bro. Like it's no, just not a thing. No. So, uh, I'm yeah. glad that that has worked its way out. And now you can find normal pants a lot easier because there for a while it was a struggle to find mm -hmm. just a normal pair of fucking jeans everywhere you went. Everything was like 
goddamn leotards. It's ridiculous. I got these joggers from Target. They're amazing, man. They're so comfortable and they look almost like khakis. Dude, you know what? I don't ever wear joggers because now that they put like the stretch in like jeans, uh -huh. Uh -huh. all the jeans have like yeah. the elastic in them where they got a little yeah. stretch. Dude, to me, they're just as How comfortable. How do you feel about that? How do you feel I about love that? I love them. I do. I do feel like they're not really jeans anymore. Though. I feel like the jean purists must hate that shit. Well, sure. Like if you're one of those guys that likes to buy raw denim and like age Selvage. It. Oh, Selvage hey, this is denim. This is something to talk about real quick. Sorry. We're going to wrap it up. I said five minutes. So we got like two or three minutes. We're going to wrap it up. I heard I was watching a thing one time. It was like the, the, the head honcho at Levi's, right? Uh -huh. He was on there and he was saying, you're not supposed to wash jeans, right? Yeah. Jeans should only be washed when they're soiled, right? Like if you get something on them or if they start looking super dingy and gross. I mean, if, you know, if, you're, if you're working an oil rig every day and you go out or you're a diesel mechanic and you come home and they're fucking hammered, then absolutely. But like normal wear and tear, unless they're soiled, you're not supposed to wash jeans. And he was saying that That's, this guy from Levi's, he was saying he would go months without washing his jeans. He just gross. He hangs them up. Let some air out or whatever, and you know, does it. So I go a long time without washing my jeans sometimes, and my wife gets totally grossed out by it. And I'm like, dude, yeah, if they're not. I, I can understand. If they're not dirty, though, I mean, it's not like I'm free marinating, balling, marinating steaks in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I wear underwear. You're, you're you know fermenting. What I'm saying? So like, you're fermenting down there. <laughs> no thanks. If, <laughs> if I if I was free balling in my, All you right. know, I got stories about this. So I got really into denim at one point when I was into like streetwear and stuff when I was younger. And yeah, you're they're hard Japanese denim and if you wash them it ruins the look. And so uh uh Levi's has a pair of shrink to fit that are amazing selvage cheap de jeans but um, yeah, you're not supposed to watch it. So what do you do? I asked this store clerk. So what do you do? He said, you put them in the freezer. It kills everything. Yeah. Okay, that's, this that's guy just said that. Hold on. Wait, where that's was it? I yeah. saw a comment. James, James yeah. where was it? So yeah, right here. And my brother's friend puts them in the freezer. Okay. So you put them in the freezer. Um, Dude, look at that the, dog. The, Jesus Christ. Look at the <laughs> mane on that thing. Sorry. Go ahead. So you put them yeah, in the freezer. Cockfight over there. Uh, <laughs> you, you can put them in the freezer. Um, I've bought really expensive, you know, sort of custom jeans at Schaefer's Garment uh, Garment Hotel uh, in uh, in L.A. This guy makes amazing jeans, and he's like, "Yeah, don't wash them." But man, I always throw them in the washer anyway. And and like the black pair, I just like the way they look, you know, getting beat up in the washer and stuff. But I I just can't. I, I I'll wear a pair of pants twice. No, but, dude. like I'm not going. Look, my man Brandon says, I don't remember the last time I washed my jeans. If you don't think about it, it's not problem doesn't exist. It's fucking it's fine. <laughs> He's my, that's me, dude. Like, don't get me wrong. When when I start, when they if they get to where they smell or if they look dirty, I'll wash them. But man, like, like Allison says they get heavy. <laughs> uh, but Do you, I, I don't have know, you ever man. had like, jock itch? Have you ever had jock itch? No, man. And I played a lot of sports in high school and stuff, and I never, never yeah, had. You're that. lucky. I think it's a genetic thing. I think it's a genetic thing. Yeah. Uh, same thing with athlete's foot. Yeah, I've never gotten that either. And I, I played a lot of sports yeah, you, growing up and stuff, but yeah, I, I never you don't have got that into that. Gene. But, um, but no, I mean, I, I definitely wash them, but I, I just don't wash them often. Um, you know, when they start looking gross, and it depends on what I do in them. There's been times where I've gone months without washing them. And then there's been times where I wear them a week and then they need to be washed because I get something on them or they start, you know, I'm sweating in them too much because it's hot or whatever. Allison's out, everybody. Allison, she's leaving. Good she night, said she's Allison. done. She's got to go check on the kids. Good, Good night, Allison. Thank you for uh, staying in the comments. And I'll see y'all next week. She'll see y'all next. Okay. Yeah, next week, Allison. Ryan, you're looking slim and trim, bud. Thank you so much. I'm working hard on it. Speaking of, real quick, let's roll this real quick. <laughs> next week. We have Ooh, the oh my AJ gosh. Fernandez Ramoneones coming next week wow. with special guest good Big cigar. Al, a.k.a. The Wife. She will be joining us next week. Yes, sir. So that's next week coming up. That's a great cigar. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a banger. Oh, that no is special guest next week. Well, my now wife you have your week. own section on our website now that has all of your cigars, all mm -hmm. of these cigars, and all your future releases. Yep. Yep. And we got a little, we can't go too deep into it because YouTube will say we're routing people and what, but I do yeah, have yeah, yeah. a link below that is to my website 
And in my website, there is more details about future cigars and what we're doing nice. and all the things. So if you're interested in checking that out, go check that out. But you, c- you can't uh, suggest that for people to buy yeah. cigars because people, I, YouTube will get I upset. Just hope you have me, I just hope you have me back on here sometime. Oh, dude, that's what I was going to say. I, um, I'm not going to be able to do this every single week uh, because yeah. – there's going to be times I get sick or something comes up that we're going to miss weeks, but I'm going to try to do every week, right. With, with the understanding that there are going to be holidays and stuff that maybe we miss. Yeah. Um, but say 52 weeks in a year, let's shoot for say 45 to 48 episodes a year. Um, there's just no way. I, I don't know enough people to have that many guests, right? Like that's a lot of guests. So, uh, there will definitely be, reoccurring guests that if you're okay with coming back on here, you'll definitely be back on. I'll try to get the bourbon. There will be repeat guests multiple times. Um, Shout out to the bourbon junkies. Those guys are great. Dude, they are great. I love those guys. Those are some of my favorite people on the YouTube. I think I owe him a bottle too. I I have a couple bottles left. I'll I'll send one to you and one to him. He he helped out with the blending press. Yeah, Yeah, dude. They'll love that. Those those are great guys. They actually, if I'm not mistaken, he's a member of Bravada. Mm -hmm. I think a, a... um, I just had a stroke. I just had a fucking stroke. Dan, good God. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I, I, I can't remember anything anymore. I don't know. Dude, in my most recent Crazy. video, I, I literally had a stroke in the video. You see me reboot. You see me reboot. I was talking about something. I was just like, and I totally forgot what I was even talking about. I was just like, I fucking just rebooted and I kept it in the edit because I was like, dude. I forget to- what I'm talking about all the time because I go down, I get off track. And then I go, well, what the fuck were we even talking about in the first place? What am I, ram- <laughs> what am I rambling on about here? I do that. Sound like all, an idiot. <laughs> I do that all the time. Well, all right, man. We'll close this one out. I, I know it's My late. Brother. A lot of people have been on for. We've been here a little over two hours at this point, so we're trying to keep it around the two hour mark for you guys, so you can. Um, get to bed because we got work the next day brian my brother i love you man thank you so much for Bro. coming on i appreciate you i love you i love as we say in my family i love you more uh, that's it man and uh you know definitely guys if you haven't checked out this uh, local social uh, pub podcast definitely go check that out subscribe yeah. to that subscribe to uh, provide a cigar club youtube channel those guys are doing some fantastic stuff over there thank and go so check much. out the guys at provide they're some of my favorite people in the industry faux show Awesome. Thank Brother. you so much, Jeremy. I appreciate you uh, doing this. And, um, you know, you're a big part of this n- next generation of cigar smokers. And, um, you know, we couldn't do this without you. So thank you. Dude, thank you very much. I love you, brother. And, uh, you I mean, we talk all the time. So I'll see you soon. Guys, yeah. thanks to everybody <laughs> that came to in too. tonight. Thank you for all the super chats. That always helps. Check down below. Like I said, there's a link on my website for stuff. Uh, obviously, I got a bunch of merch. If you these um, these new guys are coming out real soon, I think in a couple of weeks we're dropping the new Ooh, Viskies. I switched nice. over from Glen Cairns. We're still gonna have the Glen Cairns on the website, but we came out with these new Viskies, which I think is I like actually it. a superior tasting glass. I like it. It's a little heavier duty. We got those coming. Cigar scissors, all kinds of cool stuff coming. So definitely follow me on all the socials to see when we drop merch. Check out the website and exclusive. We've got a whole line of cool shit so go check it out all right guys love everybody thanks for being here we'll see you peace